Good evening, and welcome to the May 11th meeting of the Scarborough Planning Board. Can we all rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> Now, and you want to do the roll, please? Ms. Auglis? Here. Mr. McGee? Here. Mr. Bealey? Here. Mr. Fellows? Mr. Mazur? Here. Mr. DuPont? Here. And Mr. Wood? Here. Okay, I got a, a couple of comments before we begin the formal agenda. <clears throat> Number one, in the absence of uh, Mr. Fellows, Ms. Auglis is a voting member this evening. Uh, number two, item five, Frank Marston, uh, 55 Spring Street, has requested that uh, this be tabled. So uh, that item has been tabled until the future meeting. And third, we've got a pretty long agenda, so I want to keep things going at as rapid a rate as possible, not to say that everybody won't have an opportunity to speak and uh, say whatever they wish to say. But I'd like to get through all the items tonight because I know how difficult it is to keep bringing people back uh, when it isn't totally necessary. So with that in mind, uh, we'll begin with item number four, the habit item number three. Thank you. The approval of the minutes. So we have a motion. So moved. Do I have a second? Thank you. Any any discussion? Yes. No discussion. No discussion. You're jumping the gun. <laughs> trying to move. <laughs> You're ahead of me. He's trying to move it along. Uh, trying to move it along. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, all in favor? Abstain. Abstain. To, okay. Two abstentions. Now we'll get to item number four. Habitat for Humanity of Greater Portland requests reapproval of subdivision for 13 lot residential subdivision off Broad Turn Road called Foster Farm Subdivision 2, which is assessed as map uh, R47 lot 5A. Jay, you want to sort of? Sure, I'll give you a quick overview. Uh, as it was just as it's indicated in the title, this is a reapproval. This application was approved in January of this year. Um, the town has a requirement that plans be recorded 90 days from date of approval. However, uh, uh, the applicant, Habitat for Humanity, was unable to meet that um, requirement due to um, some uh, further difficulties with the closing. There is now a closing schedule. As folks remember, this is actually part of town-owned land that there'll be um, uh, cooperation between the town and uh, Habitat for Humanity. So there's a closing schedule for the end of the month. And, um, been assured that uh, with a reapproval, they'll be able to record within the next 90 days. Nothing has changed from the plan since the board saw it in January, um, and so staff is comfortable with it at this point um, and has provided a draft motion uh, for the board to consider if there um, aren't any other issues to be addressed. Is the applicant here? Please give your name. Yeah, Mark Primo. I'm a development associate with Habitat. And if I may, just give you a, a quick update. Um, as Jay was saying, the, uh, the um, we had lawyers trying to close this thing within the 90 days, um, but with the affordability covenants, um, the uh, mortgage positioning, uh, and the biggest issue was the letter of credit requirements of the town. Um, we have two different lenders on this project. One is Gorm Savings Bank, and the other is the Genesis Fund. <coughs> Uh, which has a housing-related mission, um, and Genesis Fund doesn't do letter; they don't issue letters of credit. So Gorham Savings ended up having to cover the whole letter of credit, even though they're not lending on the whole amount. Um, and they were they were able to do that, but they needed to order an appraisal, which came back. And we've, like Jay said, we've got the closing date scheduled for May 27th, uh, and we've got Grandin lined up for June. So we're we're ready to go, and the timing of this. It lines up well with um, the Community Development Block Grant, which is also uh, being voted on, I think, this week. It may even be tonight. I don't know. Um, 
and that will allow the sewer extension and the timing of that. So everything, I, I know it's been a long time coming, but we're ready to go and we're looking for the reapproval. Okay. Um, does anybody on the board have any comments, questions? Um, the only thing I would remind the applicant is that there are some conditions of approval that we had approved previously. Um, and uh, oh, I didn't realize this was the first time on that. That's right, because the final approval. Oh, yeah, yeah. um, let me go back a step. Uh, since this is the first time, this is open to public discussion. Is there anybody from the public that would like to make a comment on this proposal? Okay. I'll close that. Um, getting back to what I was just saying, uh, you know the terms and conditions that yes. previously. Okay, let, let, let me <coughs> then have a draft motion. Uh, in light of the board's private finding that the applicant had satisfied all the ordinance requirements and that there are no substantive proposed changes to the prior approval, I move to reapprove the application of Habitat for Humanity of Greater Portland for the Foster Farm 2 subdivision. All applicable findings, waivers, and conditions of approval from the board's January 26, 2015 approval remain in effect. Second. Any discussion? All in favor. Great, thank you. The next agenda item has been tabled, which leads us to agenda item number six. Don Himmel, Three Bay Street, requests an advisory opinion for an appeal from restrictions on non conforming uses. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. My name is Jim Fisher with Northeast Civil Solutions, and we're here this evening to uh, represent Mr. and Mrs. Hamill regarding their project at Three Bay Street, which is down in the East Grand uh, um, Pine Point area. Uh, essentially, like the previous project, this, the town has already heard this one as well, although it was not with the planning board, it was with the zoning board. Uh, we did actually receive zoning board of appro uh, for approvals um, almost a year ago and then uh, got an extension this past autumn. Uh, essentially what happened is uh, there are two completely different uh, independent living units that are on the property. One's a smaller cottage, one's the main house. The Hamels live in the main house as their princi principal residence. They were looking because of uh, the age of the structure, which is quite aged and uh, deteriorating, as many projects in that area tend to do structurally. Uh, we went to the, they were intending to uh, raise and rebuild and still are the main house. We went to the Zoning Board of Appeals for that a year ago. Uh, we received a unanimous approval to be able to do that. They were, had the intention of uh, doing the, uh, the main house, raising it, uh, as in tearing it down and then rebuilding it uh, this past autumn. Uh, they didn't get to that as quickly as they thought because basically the moratorium or the unofficial moratorium for doing any construction, uh, as Scarborough knows, uh, in the beach areas of town, uh, before anything gets built, you'd like to get through the summer tourist season. So they were preparing to do this last autumn. Uh, they ran out of time in terms of that uh, relatively narrow window to start. So we went back to the Zoning Board of Appeals for an extension and we got it. Uh, then over the winter time, as they actually started to do the, uh, or began the construction, they were advised uh, that the cottage that was to be left untouched at this stage, they were uh, reserved the right to come back to the zoning board at some point in the future. Uh, and they were going to focus primarily on, uh, or solely, on the existing house. Their contractor stated, and you can see from your files, that the uh, spatial location of the cottage to the house is relatively close. And their contractor advised them when he did hear that eventually they would like to work on the cottage as well, that it would be a lot easier to tear down and redo both buildings at the same time. So uh, they toned, so they decided or then over the winter time that that would be prudent advice to follow. And uh, subsequently they decided to scale back, and this has nothing to do with the planning board, but they've scaled back uh, their intended renovation of the existing house from, or the main house from three stories down to two stories. But in conjunction with that, they wanted them to be able to work on the cottage, the smaller cottage, at the same time. So far, so good. 
Um, so we are into the Zoning Board of Appeals um, because of the small area of the lot. It doesn't meet current zoning. When you tear a building down, you typically have to meet current zoning to the greatest extent feasible, uh, and which is one of the reasons we're here this evening. But uh, they decided then over the winter that uh, it would be better to be able to do both cottages at the same time. And because we are about buildings, but because we are proposing to uh, raise both structures, it is prudent and on our advice that they make them uh, as least non-conforming as possible or more conforming to the extent that is feasible. Toward that end, we suggested that uh, they move the cottage from its existing uh, location that you can see on your plans is tucked in that back corner uh, as far into the lot as possible, which doesn't move it a whole lot, but does move it uh, in the right direction two ways, away from both the sideline and the back line. In order to do that, because we were proposing to raise the building and then rebuild it or reconstruct it, uh, we need to have an advisory opinion from the planning board. What that basically means is that we are looking for your opinion to the Zoning Board of Appeals that this building is actually being moved to make it less non-conforming on the actual site. There's more to it than that, but in a nutshell, I'm happy to answer any questions or address any comments that you may have. Since this is also the first time we're hearing this, this is open for public discussion also. Is there anybody from the public that would like to make a comment? I close that and open it to the board. Mike, you want to start? Sure, thank you. Hi, Jim. Um, on, on your uh, illustration that you have up, that shows what the project may look after it's gained all its approvals. Is that correct? No. <coughs> What I'm trying to do is uh, just just get an understanding of. I'm, I'm just trying to get an understanding of where the cottage is now and where it's moving to. Sure. Um, cottage right now. The cottage right now is, as you see it in this corner of the lot, is actually going to be moved about two feet this direction and about uh, a similar amount this direction. Uh, that's as far as it can actually be moved on the lot because there, through the State Fire Marshal's Code, there is a, uh, a criteria that separated buildings have to be separated by a minimum distance from a fire code standpoint. Uh, but we still have a little bit of play here, and uh, toward that end, what you see is the existing condition is essentially what you're going to see as the final condition. It's just that this cottage is going to be moved slightly into the lot. Okay, so what we see is current condition. What you see is current condition. You actually have in your packet uh, a rendition by the architect, mm -hmm. um, it, this colored one, yep. uh, that is a sketch only to be sure, but the, the building information uh, is exactly the same. It's just going to be moved a bit, and that sketch shows you how much it's going to be moved uh, into the lot from where it is right now. So essentially what we're doing is uh, we're redoing what, was a, what you um, um, were able to achieve last year. You get, you're, you're looking for advisory opinion from us to the ZBA, and then you're going to go to the ZBA to get... Yes, we're actually approval. scheduled to go to the ZBA um, pursuant to the, uh, the approvals this evening, if it comes to that, um, in two days, on, on Wednesday. Uh, what we went to the Zoning Board of Appeals for last year and got unanimous approvals for the first time around and then for the, uh, uh, the reapproval in, uh, in the autumn was for the main building. And the footprint of the main building is essentially as you see it right now, and it's going to stay that way. Uh, that was going to be, a, it goes from a two-story structure to a three-story structure. Well, now the main building is staying as a two-story structure, and while we did not touch or did not uh, focus on last time, last year, with the zoning board, the cottage, because they, the Hamels just weren't ready to go there at that point, they had now decided with advice from their consultants and uh, from their contractors that it would be better, since they're doing both of them anyway, or they wanted to, to do both of them now. The issue then is because we're actually proposing not just to uh, expand but to move the, uh, the smaller cottage, as soon as we move anything, it's basically considered not there, right. uh, notwithstanding the fact that it's been there for about 80 years. So from a non-conforming use standpoint, uh, because it, non-conforming means there's two houses, two completely uh, individual habitable structures on one lot, we needed to come to the planning board so that you guys can take a look at this and say, you know, does it meet the criteria as far as uh, moving it anywhere else on the lot that could be done, and our advice to the zoning board would be if they pushed it as far as they can, then essentially that's then up to the zoning board to be able to approve um, that variance. And, and what is it? Is the cottage used in any way, shape, or form currently? 
Oh yes, it's been used as a habitable structure as far as we know since it was built. Um, it looks like a garage, or like it might have been a garage. It was not. Or there are no records anywhere that indicate that it was anything other than a secondary home. Basically, it's an additional dwelling unit, essentially. But it's been that way for it's in, before there was zoning. Um, and they have used it uh, for that very purpose. They've, used, they've occupied one house initially, rented out the other one. Uh, the main house is their principal residence, is their only residence right now. So what they're proposing to do is uh, during the course of the rebuild of both, uh, they will rent off-site somewhere for hopefully a relatively short period of, uh, of time over the off-season. And then they'd like to be able to uh, move in about this time next year if feasible, which it is feasible to do so. Okay, thanks. So, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, what I'm focusing on, of course, is what Jim stated, is that this is, uh, at the end of the day, this will be made still non-conforming, but more or I should say less non-conforming than its current situation, and uh, I would be in favor of moving a favorable opinion to the CBA. Thank you. Thank you. John? No issues with this at all. I assume the footprint is basically the same, just slightly. The footprint Light increased by looks of it. Uh, yes, but actually overall, um, the overall footprint of both cottages or both structures is actually going to be reduced on the lot. Okay. So it's similar to the current use. I have no issues with it at all. Susan? Um, I don't have any problems with it. Thank you. Roger. Uh, <clears throat> I, I have no problems with this either, but I do have a question maybe directed to Jay. Sure. Um, I know we have a number of um, properties in town, Higgins Beach, Donna, and mostly Higgins Beach, I think, where they have a similar situation as this, where they have a main cottage and they have a secondary cottage. Is it, uh, have we run into anything like this in the past, and is this pretty normal? Um, what I mean is moving one of the cottages around or something like that. Uh, certainly, I think you know the Zoning Board of Appeals typically sees a lot of these. Um, so uh, in terms of coming before the Planning Board, we maybe maybe one mm -hmm. a year or so. Um, but certainly the Zoning Board of Appeals sees quite a number of reconstruction, non-conforming structures um, for whatever reason don't necessarily tip the miscellaneous appeal requirement for the advisory opinion. But it's not all that uncommon. And it's part of the reason why the town long range planning committee is taking a look at the zoning down the Higgins Beach area sure, yeah. in the month of June. So, so if, if, if they were to build on the existing, the second cottage on the existing foundation, whatever was there, that would be basically grandfathered. Is that right? They, I'm, I'm sorry. If they were to just reconstruct the second cottage on the existing if they were foundation. To, basically, look. what the ordinance says is once you tear down a structure, it needs to go through a miscellaneous appeal process. So even if they okay. were to rebuild on that same location, it would still require miscellaneous appeal. Um, the ordinance in, under nonconformance talks about you know, if you demolish a building, then it needs to be reviewed. Okay. Thanks. Nick? I don't have any questions. Okay, I've just got a couple of things. Uh, <coughs> Roger, just to follow up, uh, so to understand, we were talking about this before the formal meeting. Uh, because there are so many non-conforming structures down there, the Long Range Planning Committee is trying to get the whole area rezoned so that we don't have to go through mm -hmm. this every time one of these situations come up. So mm -hmm. they are addressing the issue. Um, I just got a couple of things. Uh, one, uh, first of all, uh, a comment. This is not in the shoreline zone, so that's why we don't get into that. Uh, two, what about parking? Uh, what's the parking situation there? There is a Parking is right here, as you come right, right, right here, yeah. um, which is right in front of uh, the existing cottage and will remain that way. Okay. My second is the abutters. Are they aware of the intent here? Yes, that was actually sent. Uh, the, uh, the postcards were sent out, or the letters from the town uh, have now been sent out three times. One was for the, uh, the original approvals that we got last year, the extension this, uh, about this time, the extension in October and then again for the Zoning Board of Appeals that we're meeting on uh, in two days. Um, the first two meetings, there were public hearings, as they typically are, and there were no issues. Okay, because when are they going to start doing this, by the way? What's their intent? Constructing the project? Yeah. Again? They would be after the summer season. After the summer season. Yes. Okay. So that it won't disrupt the, the whole no. summer flow. Of no, there's a very strong rule of thumb that says, in the tourist areas, please do not, not shy of emergency situations no major external construction between uh, Memorial Day and Labor Day. Okay. All right. I just wanted to double check on that. Um, I don't have any further questions. So um, 
we just have to give an advisory opinion, and then it seems that it's too unanimous that we will give a, a positive advisory opinion to the ZBA on your behalf. That's great. Thank, Thank you for your time. Now we have a little different situation. <laughs> Item number seven, Ann Stewart, 22 Massacre, uh, Massacre Lane, requests review for the placement of a foundation under a non-conforming structure in the shoreline zone. <coughs> Hello, my name is Trevor Watson. I'm uh, working on behalf of uh, the Stewarts. And I work for Eider Investments uh, down on Black Point Road. <clears throat> okay, so the um, the stewards are hoping to uh, gain your approval that the current that as the structure currently exists, it is the uh, best location for it to exist so that uh, we can elevate the structure to the anticipated uh, FEMA flood maps. So the, there's, as uh, Jay noted, there's a couple of uh, restrictions on, po uh, on this lot. The first is that it's a, non -con it's a non conforming lot because it does not meet the uh, minimum lot size. It also has no legal building envelope as the front and rear yards uh, setbacks overlap each other. Uh, it's basically a flat lot, um, and it's uh, impacted by the shoreland zone, uh, or, uh, sort of the, the shoreland zone, the wetlands. So no other uh, uh, restrictions impact this lot other than the uh, shoreland zone. So um, we're not looking to increase the footprint at all. We're just looking to merely elevate the structure. Uh, it's existed in this location at this elevation uh, since it was built uh, 60 plus years ago. Um, and we have uh, support from all the neighbors. I, I think I included all the letters. Uh, yes. Yeah, which is first for us. So um, basically any, any uh, proposal to, we feel that any proposal to relocate the structure to benefit the shoreland zone on the on the one side would be negatively impactful to at least uh, property owners on two other sides. So I think that's it. I'm not as well versed in the planning board as I am the zoning board, but. Okay. Um. Oh, one last comment. Sorry, looking at my notes. It's not possible to completely relocate the structure anywhere on the lot and fully remove it from the shoreland zone. Okay. Once again, this is the first time it's coming before us, and this is also open to public discussion. Does anybody have any comments? If not, I'll close public discussion and open it up to the board. Uh, to me, this one is pretty straightforward. Is anybody on the board? Sue, go ahead. Um, Do I get a pass? No. Hmm? Do I get a pass? <laughs> <laughs> no, but I think we're going to give our okay to it because let's face it, it's got to be done. And uh, we're going to have to have a discussion about it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay.
two feet above, so that the lot itself is actually depressed. Um, you can see in the photo to the right of that, uh, the Stewart residence is the, is the house on the left. Um, you can see that the, the house on the right uh, is higher, is a higher structure, as also indicated in the, in the, in the image to the lower right. And then the lower left is just the, the seasonal flooding that, that happens. Um, you know, it's, it's, incre you know, it's increasing every year. Um, so th there's no there's no effort or uh, interest in diverting the water in any way, shape, or form. You're just still going to let that take its natural course. I mean, I, I think short of, I don't think that would be possible to divert the water. Uh, um, I mean, you're limited. I'm, I'm not uh, an expert on it, but you're limited in how much fill you could move in, and, and I think that any any method of diversion would be potentially negatively impactful to the neighbors. Uh, you know, and then you'd have to divert it. You'd have to divert it straight to the ocean. So you'd have to cross Massacre Lane and then mm -hmm. um, Meredith Webster's lot, and then you'd have a some kind of drain pipe on the beach. I don't so know. So, how it, so no basement. There's going to be. It's just nope. going to be built. Are, on we're piers. going to be elevated up on concrete piers. Um, currently, the structure exists on wood posts, okay. and uh, okay. the uh, you know it's it's a it's a it's a maintenance issue. You know, every couple of years, the uh, I get into it in the in the zoning board, but every couple of years, the the you know the wood rots away. Even pressure treated is not meant to be uh, inundated or submerged with water. Uh, I include some documentation that I can get you from the you know the pressure treated wood manufacturers association of America. Uh, that it, you know, it's just a, it's a maintenance issue and. It, it's, it's begin, it begins to impact the value of the property, you know, who's going to buy a property that, that needs, uh, you know, an almost constant maintenance to shoring up the foundation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you've already done the engineering uh, as far as finding a stable, um, what is it, bedrock? Is it going to sit on bedrock or? No, nope, it'll sit on uh, concrete piers, so the last page of no, the. No, the concrete um, piers, they'll sit on what? It, the concrete piers will sit on a continuous footing, so it basically will look like a um, checkerboard, almost. You know, of the of the, of the footing being continuously uh, poured, w one solid footing, not not you know slab, but the the piers, the, the footings for the piers will be interconnected, and so the goal is that you go down far enough and the whole building is stabilized, so that it doesn't it it, it offsets the weight the the, the pressure of the earth and the, 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 the amount of footprint uh, offsets the weight of the building so that it doesn't, uh, you know, sink. But it, it floats. Uh, I mean, I guess you could say that, it, you know, as, as odd as that sounds. Right, okay. The building would float on the footing. <laughs> okay, thanks, Mr. Chairman. Anybody else? No. I just a uh, question on the piers again. Uh, do we, maybe it's in here somewhere, but do we have any kind of guidelines as to um, how many piers, I mean, like I agree with Sue, we're going to see more of these. And do we have any kind of guidelines that you're supposed to have so many piers per square foot of structure being raised and how deep these piers are supposed to go down or anything like that, or is this all brand new? Well, they have to go down to four feet, four ledge. Four feet is the building code requirement. Okay. And in, in terms of the um, the, the number, uh, basically we just sort of replace uh, the wooden ones. Yeah, because that's designating point loads, or you know, I mean, if it, if it didn't, if if it needed more, you would think that a problem would have come up in the last 60 years. Okay. I'm all set. You're all set. Okay, I'll tell you one thing that impressed me. We've had in my tenure here. Uh, many projects, and we've had pros and cons from abutters. This is the first time I think I've had eight approvals for, by abutters uh, in all the time that I sat here. I was impressed. I didn't know if I should include all of them. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I'll tell you, how that catches my eye uh, if nobody else's, and that was very impressive. Um, okay, I have a draft motion. Based on the materials presented in the application submitted by Ida uh, Investments, I move to approve the application of Mr. and Mrs. Stewart for the placement of a foundation under the existing 
non-conforming structure uh, 22 Mass Acre Lane in the Shoreline Overlay District. Do I hear a second? Any discussion? All in favor? So All right, thank you very much. Okay, now we're going to go off in a little different direction. Item number eight. Dunstan Properties LLC requests sketch plan review for mixed use development at the intersection of Route 1 and Stewart Drive. I don't know that the applicant. Sorry, checking. I don't know the applicant is here, Mr. Chair. He's being hot. Being so. Not here. The board is so inclined. You could move this item to last on the agenda and see if the applicant appears, or sure. you could go forward with the discussion. So it would be no. pretty difficult at sketch plan level. No, I'll so move it down, and if they're not here, we'll just put it off. I'll approve that. Okay. <laughs> Item number nine. Burnham Village LLC requests a site plan and subdivision review for the Burnham. Village apartment complex. <laughs> I know. I know. <laughs> After him. So after he's. Uh, 
uh, and it's certainly been a, a standard section that I've seen in a lot of uh, parking lots and driveways and those types of things. So uh, uh, we're comfortable that the existing Dyna Drive is certainly acceptable for the proposed use we're looking at, which is you know 32 one-bedroom apartments that will be accessing through the driveway. Um, uh, Jay also mentioned about a propane, the proposed propane tank on the north side of one of the buildings, and uh, couldn't we screen that with some uh, stockade fencing? And would be happy to do that uh, if the board would be comfortable with that as a condition. Uh, there was a, another discussion regarding public safety, and we did talk to uh, 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 Captain St. Pierre, and in terms of the, the addresses of the buildings and how they're going to be designated, uh, we believe are all set with public safety and the fire department, and in terms of access, uh, sprinkler systems, the alarms, and the whole nine yards. So we do think uh, everything's worked out from the, uh, the public safety standpoint. Uh, we did have the uh, memorandum from uh, Wooded and Curran as well. Uh, which again, obviously they didn't uh, dig any test pits out there regarding the existing driveway, nor did I, uh, but they did state that uh, 18 inches of total pavement structure is commonly used depth of passenger vehicle driveways and roadways found on uh, suitable subsoil. So uh, again, Mr. Chairman, I know you folks have seen this a lot. As you stated, I know you have a busy agenda tonight, so I would conclude my presentation, but certainly be uh, happy to answer any questions that the board may have regarding this approval. Thank you. Before uh, I open this up to the board, we have had request from a couple of people of the uh, from the public to uh, make comments and I'm going to allow that <coughs> so if anybody is here from the public that wishes to talk about this particular project please come forward give your name and address please <coughs> Erica Snow and 10 Dunstan Avenue um, B I am here on behalf of my father, Tom Snow. <coughs> Tom Snow, who um, actually owns the property. Um, one of his main concerns is if any of this traffic will end up coming out um, through North Street and onto Dunstan Avenue um, or via Adora Circle and then down onto Dunstan Avenue. Because um, right now, obviously, we have a issue as it is with traffic. Um, my concern would be, as far as it all coming out onto Broad Turn Road, would be people trying to make that right turn, or I should say left turn, across traffic and potentially backing traffic up to um, Route 1, especially in the summertime. And now with Habitat for Humanity, also putting buildings up further down the road on Broad Turn Road that the amount of traffic that's going to be um, coming down through there, I think that um, I'm not quite sure what was determined as far as the traffic study and what's going to be done about that, but we all know that Dunstan is <laughs> um, a traffic nightmare, shall we say. So um, I hope that that is taken into consideration with any of this. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, good evening. My name is Emily Hall. I live at 4 North Street. Uh, my concern is actually for, I have a, a similar concern as my neighbors. Hi, nice to meet you. Um, with traffic, I last plan I saw actually though hopefully that's not an issue and I'm, I'm hoping the plan hasn't changed. Um, my concern is for the maintenance of the complex. So right now with three apartment buildings I don't think it's well maintained as it should be. Um, it's common to see uh, trash outside of the cans. Uh, the mailboxes pile over and then I get trash blowing into my yard I'm constantly picking up trash. Um, so that's my biggest concern and uh, doubling the number of buildings or tripling when you include garages and all the other things. Um, I would like, I'm interested to hear the plan for better maintaining. Um, I don't know, last I saw there wasn't a sufficient buffer or fence or anything on, on the <coughs> North Street entrance. I think that's important to kind of maintain the North Street Dunstan Ave neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? If not, I'll close the public comment and open it up to the board. John, you want to start? I'm all set with it. Okay. 
slide. Sure. Um, uh, Sean, is, this, this phase does not exit out to uh, North or Aurora, does it? Does That's correct. And, and remember, they're not interconnected either. So, uh, you know, there will be no opportunity uh, for the traffic from this phase to actually go through the, the existing phase and to access either uh, North Street or Aurora Circle. Um, uh, and remember, that was a big part of the conversation we worked through in terms of the whole master plan associated with this. So there's no interconnectivity between the two phases. We'll have an access off from Diner Drive, which is off from Broad Turn Road. Uh, we did have a full traffic study at the intersection of Broad Turn Road and Diner Drive, uh, which was reviewed by the, uh, the town's traffic engineer. Actually, it's a high level of service at that, at that intersection. Uh, we do know the situation in Dunstan. Um, which again is obviously a much bigger issue than, than what can be dealt with here on this site. Um, however, there is a, as you all know, there's a, a the, the town has an intersection fee, uh, and you know we're pay, actually paying our fair share associated with that. I think it's in terms of just to the Dunstan. I think that's right around thirty thousand dollars in terms of what our our, our uh, uh, contribution will be to uh, uh, to assist in the uh, uh, the improvements at Dunstan, but actually at the driveway entrance of Broad Turn and Diner Drive, uh, you know, it's it's in fine shape and uh, there's good sight distance and uh, good level of service. Um, I appreciate you uh, providing us with a uh, report on the condition of Diner Drive. Um, that is a private road. It, and, yes. And, and can you just really really quick just illustrate who? Who is in charge of the maintenance of it? Is it shared by uh, this development as well it, as the it diner? Is, it will be as of this construction. Of course, right now, the only thing it services is the diner, period. Right. So right now, the diner is uh, the lone uh, uh, person responsible for the maintenance associated with that driveway in their parking area. Uh, but when uh, uh, the applicant obtained uh, an easement uh, to utilize that, they, in fact, didn't enter into a, a maintenance agreement as well associated with that. Number one, obviously, Anything we do in association with our construction has to be brought back to its, its pre-existing condition, and then there is a sharing formula worked out for, for plowing and maintenance and those types of things down the road. Uh, I just have to provide this little bit of feedback. It's not enough for me to not uh, to, to oppose the project, but I, 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 I think it's important that I do. I would say that if we were beginning by illustrating this new development with a road off broad turn, with an access drive off broad turn, I think I would have asked for something a little bit more substantial as far as width, et cetera. I drove on that road uh, a couple weeks ago, and um, as, you, as you stated, it's about 20 feet wide, I think you said the pavement was, and we've, we've approved 20 foot wide roads before, at least 22 maybe, or less than the standard of 24, <clears throat> but I just wonder what I mean, what, maybe you can tell me, what was the trip, uh, I don't have it in front of me, what uh, the traffic analysis says as far as what 32 one-bedroom homes is going to generate? Uh, we look more obviously at the peaks, but they were looking at uh, 22 a.m. peak hour trips and mm -hmm. 25 p.m. peak hour trips. So, you know, roughly one every two minutes. Right. So, I don't know, I d I'm just cautiously optimistic that that's going to work out, and uh, I don't know what recourse, if you will, the town might have if in, the, if in a future day we find that it just doesn't serve the demand? Well, again, I, I would certainly think from the applicant's standpoint and certainly from the diners as well that obviously if there's any issues associated with that uh, through the chair that, you know, I'm sure that they would want to rectify that as well. Uh, again, I appreciate your concerns, but I, I don't know if I, I totally share them, to be honest with you. I just don't see, I think that we'll be seeing the level uh, of activity on that driveway that's, that would really <coughs> cause me any great concerns. It really doesn't. Are we here tonight for uh, final approval? Mm -hmm. yes. 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 Okay. Uh, I, I did notice that the condition of the road in some areas was, you know, in Dyna Drive mm -hmm. was, you know, a little uh, disrepair. Where that utility work had occurred, yes. Exactly. Um, is that going to be brought up to a better standard. And like I say, our utilities are going in right in that same area, so I would say at the end of the day, hopefully that, you know, right where we're tying in with our driveways coming in, that that area right in there should all be pretty much brought to, you know, a finished pavement uh, quality. Okay. And once that's all completed, that will, um, I, that will be analyzed by town engineers. So maybe a question for Jay. Um, uh, I mean, there'll be a standard evaluation. Kind of the conditions. 
as far as the you know the condition of the road is satisfactory, has been repaired satisfactorily. Yeah, we can make that part of the conditions. Is yeah, that is, is that normal anyway? At this point, um, the status of the road, you know, we don't have any, you know, other than the detailed dis discussion of what the road is built to, it's not part of their plan set. Right. So I would say right now the way things stand is certainly any cuts they do in the road, they'll have to repair to sort of the standard, sure. you know, standard fare. Mm -hmm. But in terms of any additional improvements at the board, if that's where you're seeking? Um, no, I'm just seeing. There's, there's, that wouldn't be part I'm of it. No, I'm satisfied that the report uh, tells me that the uh, the foundation, if you will, of the road, the basic construction of the road, is um, is at town standard today. But there is some disrepair of the pavement area. Yes, again, right where that utility spot was. And and if if necessary, I would like to see as a part of a approval conditions that um, an inspection be made whereby that road has been fixed to the satisfaction of you know the town. I mean, I know that sounds vague, but I don't know how else to be more. No, specific. and that's fine again, because I'll certainly I'll be out when they, because right. we're going to go into the road for utility connections. When they go in there, I'm certainly going to take a look at it as well. Okay. So you know, uh, I'd be more than happy to work with the town on, you know, that we reviewed the the, the road during construction. Uh, you know, everything seems satisfactory with the right. existing road base, uh, and now out post construction, uh, you know, the road has been brought to an acceptable level, something to that effect. Thank you, Sean. And, and to the uh, to the question of traffic, yes, Dun Dunstan has been um, has been on uh, the forefront of our discussions whenever developing, and, and there's been a lot of development in recent decade around Scarborough. We've just and changes have occurred there. I know, you know, I'm just, I know we still have issues there, but certainly changes have occurred. And um, th but there's th there's nothing that tells me that this th th that the use of this land is outside the provisions of what we have in place. As far as the ordinance goes, I mean, we can tweak it here and there, and Sean's, Sean's um, um, worked hard to do that, as our town staff has. But um, it's, it's a it's a it's a good use of the land. We need more uh, more opportunities for folks to live in uh, projects such as this, and uh, and we just do the best we can with uh, with the ordinance we have in uh, in place. And and the impact fee does, in fact, help improve that uh, help improve that intersection, as, as we've seen over the past several years. So. Um, the traffic experts say it's going to work. And I will just remind the board, as a part of our master plan, when we spent quite a bit of time on that, remember I originally had an access out to Martin Drive. Certainly no one wanted us to go out to North Street or Aurora Circle. I think we all understood that early in the process. Uh, my only available apps, access originally was Martin Drive, uh, so folks didn't want to see that. So, you know, when it really came down to it was, you know, the, the Diner Drive was the, the preferred option, if you will, from staff and the board. Uh, early in the master planning process. So, you know, we did do our best and, and the applicant did his best in terms of obtaining that access easement. So, in fact, we could utilize that, that existing driveway. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Susan? Um, <coughs> great landscaping. Thank you very much. I got a copy from staff that it was my size so I could actually read it and know what you're using in great landscaping. Um, I also drove down in there. I drove down in there twice. I drove down in once just so I could figure out what the road did and notice what it was you were talking about. I just assumed that that would be cleaned up because it's going to be used, whereas right now it's not being used. But I think putting it as a condition probably is not a bad idea. Um, the second time I went, there were two different groups of people out. I do this a lot. I stopped and I talked to them, and I said, what do you think? this guy take good care of his places? Oh, yeah, got any problems? No, noisy? Oh, no, everything's great. So then I stopped at the other and asked the same questions and got exactly the same feedback. There was nothing on the ground. There was absolutely no indication whatsoever that it wasn't being well cared for. So maybe, it, and they didn't know I was coming. So I think that basically with that kind of an experience, I feel pretty good about <clears throat> what it is, is being offered. And I think it's wonderful that, it's, that we're doing this in Scarborough I call it workforce housing. I'm not sure that's exactly what workforce housing is, but we don't have any of it in Scarborough. So um, I really approve highly of the concept here. And one, one more thing I was going to say. Um, concept here. Oh, and it goes beautifully with Habitat for Humanity. So the fact that they're in the same general neighborhood is great. So I wish them good luck. And um, I'm sure we'll watch it carefully. If there are any problems with the road or if there is any problems with the maintenance, we'll be hearing about it. Thank you. Roger. I'm also. Nick? 
if you could just refresh my memory, um, I believe it's in the upper left of that parking area. There's, there's supposed to be the, is that where the trash containers were? And, it, and if you jog my memory, there was a different, you were using a different methodology for the trash bins than what was used on the first phase. Is that correct? Right, exactly. The dumps are in the existing first phase. Can, um, and can you just, yeah. And we don't want to use the dumpster in the second right. phase. And hopefully we'll retire it at some point in the first phase as well. Because um, remember, we actually purchased uh, two existing buildings were there that were constructed in the 80s. So, right. we, you know, we, we bought in existing condition. Uh, but these are basically going to be larger bins, almost like the residential bins that you're going to have, but for a community purpose, like you have the recycling and the general trash. Um, they're going to be kind of hidden a little bit behind some landscaped area, but, you know, where you can actually walk from the apartments coming from the back to access the bins to, uh, to put your uh, uh, trash and recycling in, and then we'll have a private contract that will come into the parking lot, and again, we'll actually have to roll those out, if you will, uh, on a bin-by-bin on a bin basis, but it'll be a commercial pickup. It'll be utilizing, you know, basically commercial size bins, but the same type of uh, uh, bins that you folks utilize right there in the town. Thank you for the refresher. I thought that was part of it. I'm all set. Um, I just got a couple of things. Excuse me for interrupting, but before oh. you go, I forgot. Um, I have it on the um, staff comments that mentions the concept, that the issue with um, the previous buildings and the whole issue of 12 units per building. I wasn't able to be at the Long Range Planning Committee meeting, so I'm just making sure that this issue is indeed being moved along. Yeah, that actually came up. It will come up as part of the Dunstan proposal because this. Okay. This uh, applicant isn't proposing any more than 12 okay. units. No problem. Thank you. Oh, good. you're right on Thank point. Thank you, Jay. I didn't have that. <laughs> I didn't have that answer. <laughs> but right on point, Sue. Uh, I've got a couple of things. Yes, sir. Um, if I understand, the traffic won't be going on to North Street. Is That's it? absolutely correct. But when the construction is done, what road are they going to use? Diner Drive. And Diner Drive only going to Broad Turn Road. Okay, well, I, I'm sure I'm, I'm going to ask for the condition that that road be repaired bef before we, you know, give, you know, as part of the conditions. Um, the other issue, uh, the speaker uh, is saying that trash, is this, this new proposal isn't any contiguous to her. It's not. I, Harold, do you want to discuss the maintenance at all? Yep, yeah, if you want to. <coughs> Uh, this is Harold Burnham uh, uh, of Burnham Village LLC. Yep. How you doing? Okay. Uh, the I individual I on North Street. Your, your issue there is um, the pull and press has crammed as many paper, flyer things that they can attach to my mailbox kind of without asking me. And that mailman should stop after you can't put anything more in it. <laughs> it should stop there, but it doesn't. And... Uh, your concern, I will definitely address. Um, and as far as uh, what were some of the other concerns? Trash from the dumpster. We have we have a lot of people from the neighborhood that use the dumpster that I pay for private trash disposal. So we try to lock the top of it and uh, get issue keys to the tenants. And what happens is that people get that are used to using that get frustrated and just dispose on top of it or around it. That's why we went with the tote system. Maybe it'll cut down a little bit and kind of hide it, to be able to put it out in front of people so, you know, tenants can say to me, hey, you know, I saw this truck at this license plate come here and put two, three cubic yards of material around your dumpster or your dumping area. And, uh, okay. Sure, and I guess got a couple of things just to go over a couple of things. Uh, yes, screening of the propane tank, is that? That's fine. That, okay. That's a condition we'd be happy with that. And I, and I know you talked to public safety, but I look for a written, to say definitely. Yeah, but, uh, and I, okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, with that in mind, you got the third. I do have the third one if you want me to read that. Oh, yeah, because I'm not going to read no, your writing. <laughs> okay. Uh, with, with that in mind, I move to approve the site plan and subdivision application of Burnham Village LLC, titled Burnham Village Apartments, as dated 42715, for develop of three structures, consisting of a total of 32 one-bedroom units and the associated infrastructure with the following conditions. Condition one. Prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall submit revised plans addressing the following. 
additional screening to the northerly propane tank, provide a written description regarding addressing for review and approval by public safety. Two, prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall pay impact fees in accordance with the following calculation. Dunstan Corner, $30,844. Hagas Parkway, $8,910. Oak Hill, $5,285. And number three. I'm trying to capture on the discussion the board had. I believe this is what you're looking for. Um, prior to issuance of the CO certificate of occupancy, the town shall inspect the existing diner drive to ensure it has been satisfactorily repaired. If maintenance and repairs are found to be needed, they shall be completed by the applicant. That's satisfactory? Yeah, sounds good. Okay. Second. Do I have a second? second. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? Thank you very much. And thank you for the speakers, too. Appreciate their comments. <coughs> Uh, Mr. Chamberlain, <coughs> we have moved you down because we went by you, so you're going to be last on the agenda tonight. Uh, next is number 10, 137 U.S. Route 1 Scarborough Realty, LLC, request final site plan amendment review for property located at 137 U.S. Route 1 Prime Mercedes-Benz dealership and 151 U.S. Route 1 Sunoco gas station as part of a contract zone amendment review process. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the board. My name is Paul Strowski, an engineer from Sebago Technics, and with me today are uh, Mr. Dan Doucette of Prime Motors and Dave Richards of Grand Turgeon. Um, as Jay mentioned, this was before the, the planning board on March 30th, uh, basically to seek uh, conceptual preliminary approval to then go back to the town council with a final reading of the Second Amendment to the contract zone. Uh, we met with town council on April 15th, uh, at which we received unanimous approval on the Second Amendment to the contract agreement, which was recorded on uh, April 30th, um, and then that information was conveyed to Mr. Dan Bacon, uh, basically to satisfy a condition that the agreement was recorded prior to any final decision being made tonight at the board, um, is for approximately 2,200 square foot addition to the current building, as well as additional parking spaces as depicted on the plan, approximately 65 spaces, 
we've added some additional landscaping uh, per the request of the board as part of those comments, staff comments. We've also uh, decreased the total number of parking spaces uh, by two, by increasing the island width to uh, approximately ranging between nine and 11 feet. Uh, there's seven proposed uh, new LED lights. It's the same fixture, just a new LED. Uh, five of those lights around the perimeter are designated NFO, which are neighbor-friendly optics. So those will be an internal shielding system. Uh, you know, the plantings that were proposed by uh, our landscape architect are kind of in, in the keeping of what's currently there, adding some additional color. Um, along that detention berm, we we added some additional plantings, mostly uh, some sergeant junipers, which are pretty hard. Excuse me, pretty hardy, and uh, you know have the experiences that they've they've done well in kind of the narrow width areas, such as the in between the planting uh, the parking islands as well as the uh, the berm. Um, again, knowing you guys have a full agenda, that will be the conclusion of my meeting. But answer any questions. Well, this is a, an item, another item that is <coughs> for public discussion. So, if anybody from the public wishes to make a presentation, do it now. Hearing none, I close the public discussion. And I'm going to start with Susan because I know you've had some landscaping <laughs> questions. Okay. Um, okay. Where's the retention pond? The detention pond is uh, the existing one that's right along this area. Um, yeah. There's the, the current footprint right there. It will be enlarged to accommodate the additional impervious area uh, that's going to be added as a result of the parking. I'm, there, are, there are other questions that are open here, but I'm sure the rest of the board will take care of them, because I am going to stick with landscaping. <clears throat> I have asked for at least some sort of overall look at the um, landscaping along the whole Group 1 presentation of time, and it didn't happen. So I gather the applicant doesn't think it's important. And I'm going to go back to what I said last time, which to me is incredibly important because this is Route 1. This is where everybody coming south on Interstate 95 comes into Skyrope. And we're being greeted by Maine Medical Center, nice lands. I mean, you know, they had to have that parking out front. We couldn't have them pull the buildings forward. But the landscaping in that is incredibly adequate. And then we have Prime Motors. Now, I have nothing against Prime Motors. I think it's a very fine site. The building is great. The cars are terrific. But the landscaping, really. When I drive down here, because I do, I live on Black Point Road. How many times a day do I go by here? Many. And then I look, I, with my experience, and then I look at, oh, what was I looking at? Um, it showed me. Okay. If you take a look at where the retention pond is, what they have now in those areas, those parking areas that exist just beyond the um, retention pond are these big white, I don't know what you call them, but they're like <laughs> bands. What are they called? You know, somebody give me some help. Okay, fine. Yeah. And they're huge, and there are like a dozen of them that sit one right after the other. And I look at it, and the landscaping does this to mask any of them. The back end of a big white RV is not what I would consider to be something that's going to call people in, but I don't know much about the business. But there could be more of an effort made to try to put in some trees that will actually buffer. I understand not wanting to buffer the wonderful um, Half circles have come out close to Black Point Road. <clears throat> I don't have any problems with that. But when you look, if you turn that around again to the other side, this is the problem with landscaping. This is the problem with landscape sketching. Those green circles are supposed to be trees. Now, if you look at those trees, you think that you're going to get a fairly good-sized tree when it's grown, but not so much. These are not on purpose, bushy trees, because we don't want to spoil the appearance of the cars. 
which again, I understand that I'm not saying it's wrong, but this is absolutely the minimum that you could get by with and actually meet the requirements of the zoning for that part of Scarborough. I don't understand, I mean, the, what they've done with the, with the uh, parking lot, the additional parking lot, with the islands in the middle, that's really excellent. And I want to give kudos where they, where they belong. I really think that that's very well done. But nothing has been done along Route 1. It, the trees are not, a pro, are not adequate. They're not even healthy. Last year I went in and actually asked if we could get Mercedes-Benz to replace a couple of those trees so they looked as if they were healthy and it didn't happen. So I'm just, I, mean, I don't expect any of this to happen either. But it's my opportunity to say we could be doing better than this. And frankly, I'm disappointed. I think that, um, again, it's nothing against the applicant in terms of the business that he runs or the products that he sells. And it definitely is better than what used to be there. Because someone said that to me. Oh, well, it's better than what used to be there. And somehow that supposed to make me feel better, which it doesn't. So I will have enough said about landscaping. But thank you for the opportunity. I, by the way, anything that could be done just as a way of saying, well, we've heard you would be appreciated. Thank you. I do have a question before I turn it over to other members. I've noticed that you've had some sort of landscaper there the, the whole week. Were they just oh, that w that was just um, landscape maintenance, providing additional uh, uh, landscape mulch and, okay, and such. That's, that's what I thought, but I just wanted yep. to double check that. Okay. Dan, Dan, if you're going to talk, up, up to the podium, please. Uh, Roger. Um, <clears throat> to follow up a little bit on what Sue was talking about, can you describe what your plans are from going, you know, where the new addition is right over to where the Sunoco station? Along this line here? Right, right, right along Route 1. There's what, what are your plans for... Um, you know, landscaping right from there to the driveway. This, as, as basically you <coughs> come around this uh, this radial part, those are going to be flowering roses. And then as you get into this middle part where it's more fronting on Route 1, those are going to be uh, Shasta daisies, which are also going to be flowering plant. And where we're regrading that berm, there's going to be a river birch and then uh, sergeant junipers. And then you'll also be able to see as you kind of continue up into the site, those roses, as well as a um, kind of like a river stone bed with some larger boulders and additional plantings, roses, and reed grasses. Basically, that's the conveyance system to get the storm water into that pond. Um, is, is that landscaping consistent with what you have currently on the other side of, of the driveway? There's, there's some bayberries in here, and I talk with the landscape architect, and, you know, the, the junipers are more hardy and the bayberries or the bearberries, and, and that could be some of the issue is, you know, I've, I've noticed as some of these landscape plans that are coming out in these smaller <coughs> areas, they're using, you know, these junipers or uh, plantings that are more hardy in those more confined spaces, something that won't need a lot of uh, root mass that then could be adversely impacted and will die off. These, these will be more of a hardy plant in an evergreen. Um, don't don't they have flower, flowers right now along the? Um, There's some additional. There are some the roses along here yeah, and also along yeah. the side. Yes. Okay. And those Shasta, what are they Shasta lilies? Daisies. Daisies. Yeah. Um, uh, do they flower all? Yes. All summer long. Um, I believe they're in the summer months. That's all I have. I have a limited landscape. <laughs> <laughs> that makes two of us. Um, Nick? Yeah, I, I think, um, <clears throat> and I don't know if I've overlooked it in the, all of the submissions, but the best I can find is the uh, rendition of the third sign that you're going to be putting where the existing Sunoco is. Yep. Is that the, is the best rendition we're going to see no. in the back of this packet? Or? That, that is basically kind of conceptual only. They were in the process of redoing how their signs were going to look. Um, you know, w once Mercedes-Benz has a, a final determination of what their signs will look like, it will be part of a, you know, a sign permit. 
that it, you know additional information will be forthcoming to the town. And in, in this third sign, uh, can you refresh me? Is this over and above the allowable? It is. It, is. it was part of their contract zone amendment. Our current ordinance is allowed two freestanding signs per lot if you have a certain amount of frontage and certain separation. Actually, you'll note that there are, as uh, this being the third, clearly there are two existing uh, signs um, which went through sort of the site plan review process. So, yeah. so I think, you know, I'd like to take the the board's temperature through comments or however as to allowing a third sign that I mean the rendition that I'm seeing there is is it was a small classy type of little sign what I don't want to see happen out on route one is another large you know I, I want to see a I don't want to see a row of Mercedes signs as however beautiful one may think they are I don't want to overpopulate that section of route one with signage I, I just don't think it's necessary since you have two right near your entrance. Uh, I, I, I take the board's temperature. temperature. You want to give your name, please? Uh, Dan Doucette, the general manager of Pine Motorcast. I agree. I don't want that kind of sign either. Uh, the sign that you're looking at right now, I think the only change is going to be the color. Uh, that's the basic concept of the sign. It's going to be a lower uh, sign than we have right now in the middle. Uh, and uh, it's going to have the Mercedes Benz symbol on it. But uh, it's it's probably going to go from blue to black, because that is the new image that Mercedes Benz is going with. Um, I think you know, I, I think I'd like to hear from the board whether or not a third sign <coughs> is something we want out there. Like I said, I mean, for for me. Well, can I say one thing? Uh, that that third sign, when I uh, originally put this 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 uh, project together, that was, you know, I mean, it's there's trade-offs here. I'm, I'm buying a gas station for a lot of money, and I'm spending a lot of money on it, and there are trade-offs here, sure. I'm taking an eyesore. I'm taking a, a group of signs. There's got to be probably five or six different signs in that, that property, and I'm making it a one, one small, you know, that, that's appealing sign, a Mercedes-Benz sign, and, and that's uh, when I originally a, a, a came to the town manager, to Dan, I mean, that was one of I said, is this viable? I mean, uh, the, the things I was looking for was, was parking, a third sign, and uh, I think there's one other thing. I don't remember exactly what it was. But, uh, yeah, there's trade-offs here, absolutely. There are trade-offs. And, and that's why I, I'd like to, the board to at least, through comments, weigh in on how they feel about a third sign. I mean, I, I probably, um, I'm not, I don't feel as strongly as Susan does on landscaping. Um, but you do on signs. Well, the sign, I just don't want, I don't want Route 1 to be a, a row of signs. Um, as best as we the can. The only thing I would comment is, remember, you have this in Oakland station there and with signs. It, is, it does, it does, and I know that. And like I said, I, I don't think I have an, an, a strong opinion in one direction or another, but I do want to hear the board's opinion well, of course. On, on something, a topic like that, that I don't want to see overlooked. So, First of all, I don't think planning is making it better than it was. I think planning is taking what you have and making the most out of it. And I'm a, a second to landscaping come signage. The one thing I always say when I drive by Mercedes Benz is that is really classy signage. Signage is one of those things that I never did understand. People have very rabid feelings about what's good signage and what isn't. But it's been proven that beating people up with signage doesn't work. It drives them away. One well-placed, really adequate sign is better than three. In this particular case, they're really beautifully designed. I don't think we need any more than we already have. It doesn't make any sense to me. We tell other, you know, it's just... I think I think where I'm coming from on as, uh, where I, where I'm, I want to get concerned is I don't have a final draft of and, I, and although you can tell me that the sign's only going to be four feet tall and it's going to look like that and it's just going to be black when we go to do uh, an approval what you're really going to get is a third sign and I don't want to see it be a 20 foot sign I don't have I don't have any idea of how big this sign this third sign will actually be which is why I do want the board's opinion on what they feel about a third sign in general. And if it is going to get approved, what I do want is some sort of limitation as to the size of this sign um, would be my preference. So having said that, that's, that's all I have for comments. I mean, I, you know, I applaud you guys on your efforts here and what you're trying to do, and um, I'll pass it off to my board members. But that's uh, the one area that I think I have concern with. Can I ask the insured? The, the applicant, I mean, you know, why we don't have the final dimensions of the sign? Yeah. 
Sure. Mercedes Benz is in the process. Would you please oh, name? Oh, my name is David Richards. I'm an architect with Gower and Turgeon Architects. Mercedes Benz is in the process of creating a new branding package for their dealerships. All of the decisions haven't been made, so the, it was our intention to put a sign at the edge of the property where there is a sign now, which will be dramatically smaller. It'll be on a stone base, similar to the curvilinear stone wall that announces the property as you proceed from north to south on the property. So it'll be in keeping with that end of the property. And also, as you approach this property, you're approaching it from below. So it was our intention, our hope, to have a sign small in the corner. When I mean small, in the fibers, probably about yay high, set back. It's not going to be a big pylon sign. Again, it was to mark the property when you're at the traffic light approaching uh, towards it. It is a, a business selling things and the idea of showing people that that's what we're doing from that direction. The pylon sign works very well approaching from north heading south. It does not work well heading from north or from south to north. So that, and there was a, there's a, you know, there's a sign there. There was an opportunity to request this and it made sense for the dealership and we also think it's more of a emblem and, a, and demarking the corner of the property in the beginning of the site than it is a large advertisement and it will have, uh, almost, I believe it will say Mercedes Benz, with that needs to be determined. But it's, it's essentially just a graphic. Susan, and again, a go very nice end. set. Go ahead, Susan. I'm assuming that if we were to give a, uh, a passage of this, there would be a condition and the condition would, one of the conditions would have to be about signage and it would have to pass it would have to be brought in and passed. If we didn't, if it, how do I say this? If, it came, if you brought in to the um, to staff the final presentation of what you want for a, a sign, it is the um, staff, if they're <coughs> uncomfortable, can bring it back to the board. Am I correct? We can certainly draft it that way. Yep. Yeah, I'd like yep. it drafted that way because I'm sorry, Susan, I missed that. But if we're not going to know right now in anything that we're going to sign, right, what the size of this is going to be, because of the size that I'm hearing about signs sounds fine, but there's nothing in writing. So all I'm saying is that when it does come to the, as a condition of approval, when it does come to staff, that if staff looks at it and says, I don't think this is what the board had in mind, they can bring it back to the board. So we, even though we, we, even we, though we absolutely, we can and, do and, that. And may, may I add that this graphic representation very close to where, where no, it's I'm not, at this point, I'm not talking about whether we should have it or what size it should be because I'm saying we don't know. We have nothing from you that says what it's going to be. So it's going to have to come to staff at some point. And when it comes to staff, if there's any question, I would feel best as long as we just say, if, we, if we're not really crazy about, about it, it has to come back to us. Yeah, I think that's a good, and let great suggestion. Because I'm sure it's going to be fine. Can I ask a clarifying question? I did have a host of draft conditions for the board to consider, and I'm trying to modify one of them based on the discussion of the direction the board wishes to go. And so I understand as I write this up, um, I heard that, so based the fine, because uh, again, the, the um, contract zone amendment allowed for the third sign. Really, it is up to this board in terms of the design uh, and the size and scale of the, of the sign. And as I try to craft some of these details to be sure we're capturing the, um, the, the desires, um, is that, so I heard you mention, because there is no reference in terms of how tall that is, is that less than 10 feet? Or if, uh, yeah. would, would something, you know, in, in terms of maintaining a sign no greater than 10 feet, would that type of language satisfy the board? I think most importantly, and then like yes, <coughs> yes. We're just wait. What they do is they make these in certain sizes. It will. We will choose one of the smaller sizes. It will be. It can be below 10 feet without a problem. Before we <coughs> go any further, before I give it to you, Mike, let me say that I would be pushing Mercedes because uh, we're going to put certain conditions, and and, and uh, I'm in total agreement with Susan. Uh, before you're going to be able to do anything. And uh, it, it's not going to be a, a, a consent or an approval uh, 
and then after the fact. It's going to be before the fact that part of the conditions are going to be we know what the sign is. So if I were you guys, I'd be pushing Mercedes uh, as, as much as I possibly could to come up with exactly what the sign is going to look, look like. Now, Mike. Well, I would, uh, on the subject of the sign, I, 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 would just, I would just ask that the applicant uh, return to the board for that particular piece. And then we'll all get a good look at it. And um, is that after we vote tonight? Yeah, well, I mean, I I don't see how that 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 should or has to hold up everything else. Is that well, that's what we so well, so I would think that as a condition of approval, that the applicant return to the board for a final, um, if they decide to do a third sign for final approval on that sign, and then we can get all its dimensions, its colors. We're trying to get them to not have to come back by saying they brought it to staff and staff didn't like it. But if you'd rather have them come back anyway, that's fine. I, I'm of the opinion that uh, if we set parameters and staff, you know, and the chair when they're at their meeting, they're okay with it, I'm okay with it. What I don't want to see is just a, a blanket third sign. That's really what I was driving at. Um, well, saying, you know, the sign won't exceed six feet, well, you know, they come in with a seven-foot sign with a, on a, a 12-foot base. Well, I don't want to see that either. So I think just general outlines, if they're telling me that it's going to look similar to what I'm seeing in these renditions, absolutely. then I'm okay with putting a parameter to work, work within with staff and the chair rather than force the applicant to come back before another full, full meeting. I think... Yeah, and, and it's in our best interest to not have to sign large because we... The whole purpose of this project is visibility. Play area and visibility. Yeah. So, what's that? I, said, I think we're missing the point. It isn't that we want you to decide that. We're deciding about what we're going to put into what we're signing Language. tonight. Sure. <coughs> right. All right. Yeah, just to finish, I'm, I'm not all that comfortable with us giving, you know, parameters. I, I think it's best in, in, in our interest as a board, and I'm sure the applicant does would not mind to just simply return for the purpose of the sign, assuming everything else is, is uh, going to pass tonight. We've got more co comments, so I don't know which of you wants to be up there. Well, let me just say one thing, Dave. The sign is, the sign is going to be the Mercedes-Benz symbol, as you see it there. It's not going to be any higher than 10 feet, like Dave explained. It's only to designate the frontage of the dealership. Coming from the south to the north, you don't know it's a Mercedes-Benz dealership until you already pass the driveway. It's going to be a tasteful sign. It's not going to be orange or yellow like some of the signs on Route 1 are. It's going to be black with a white Mercedes-Benz logo. So yeah, it will be a tasteful again, sign. Again, that's, you know, in, on behalf of the, of the board, it's still supposition, and uh, that's the frustration that we, we're, we're, we're sensing. And, and we can do it one of two ways. And I want to get on with things and get off the sign, but we can do it one of two ways. We can do it as Mike's suggesting and take it out right now and have you come back for approval, or we could put it in one of the conditions that says that uh, uh, you have to come to the, to the staff, and if they're not in agreement, then it has to come back to the board. But, but I, I, we understand everything that you think is going to happen, but the, word, the key word here is think and not knowledge. The quick question I have is, is we have to have all signs approved anyhow, don't we? I mean, that's part of the process. So we would come before the town with, you know, the design of the sign, its size, its location, and all details we have in the past. What's that? It's a contract zone. I think it's a little it's different, a comment, too. Jay, on this one? It's a contract zone. Sure. Um, would you like... Go ahead. Um, yeah, I think that the... the the conversation boils down to certainly, as the asking just indicated, they do need to get, will need to get a sign permit. The, the, I think the question at hand is, in, is, is the board comfortable with staff reviewing it with conditions as may be modified, or is it a condition that the final design be approved by the board? Without getting into all the details, I mean, we could write some, as I think Mr. McGee noted, some parameters around if, you're, if you want staff to review it. We can write some parameters around what that might look like. Otherwise, it can come back to the board. Staff is, will operate at the uh, direction of the board. So. Okay, let's leave the sign for a moment. We'll come back to it, I promise. But let's go on. Mike, <laughs> other things. Um, okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think um, 
the gap and just get a, uh, did a nice job addressing some of our concerns. I, I'm not uh, very, um, um, I should say that. I, I think the landscaping is, is fine. I, 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 would, uh, I would suggest that you take Susan's uh, comment in that, um, assuming you'll get approval tonight, that you might want to just add it a little bit, add, add a little bit to the landscaping along the lines of what she's talking about. <laughs> it would be also nice, you know, because this is a very uh, sensitive place in, uh, in Scarborough, uh, and it is contract zone. We don't, we don't lose sight of that, certainly, um, meaning that the zone in and of itself would not allow for this kind of operation. That's why the additional levels of approval and discussion on things such as signs and landscaping, um, that maybe a landscape architect, you know, should be part of the discussion, you know. Uh, I appreciate, you know, the, the, uh, the, the, um, <clears throat> the feedback we're getting as to what flowers when and what blooms and how high it grows, but with all due respect, coming from a landscape architect, it would, it would just have a little bit more of, a, more of an impact to me. But uh, visually, it looks fine to me. Um, the, the circle, the new, the new show drive area, um, I think it is important that it not be lawn, like we talked about last time, and I think that's what you're showing tonight, that it's going to be some daisies, I guess you said, or low-growing ground type of... Um, so it certainly is an improvement over what is now there. Um, and um, it's, a, it's a great opportunity. I, uh, I was on the board the first time that um, it wasn't uh, prime, it was uh, performance motors... <coughs> And they brought that contract zone before us many years ago, and um, and then Prime, of course, uh, took that whole vision, that whole plan to uh, to uh, fruition and reality. And it, it, it's proven to be a, real, a really nice site, a nice welcome addition to that gateway of Scarborough. And I appreciate all that Prime has done there to maintain it. Um, and this is just furthering that whole statement. So. Um, I say good luck. Uh, I'm not opposed to it at all. Again, I, I would rather that we uh, <clears throat> that we move forward, and we uh, I like to I like to see this approved tonight, and I'd like to see you return with final designs on that third sign. And my sense is that that would be a pretty easy thing to do. So, thank you, sir. I'm okay with the project. Uh, certainly, an improvement of <coughs> what's going on. We honestly beat this sign thing to death. Uh, I just assume I'm okay with it going to staff. And part of that condition is they don't even get a building permit until that sign's approved. Is that part of the conditions we've got written? Sure can be. Let's make it. Let's yeah. make it. So it's going to force you guys to get us that sign thing quickly, obviously. Okay, anything else, John? Okay. Um, I'm, I'm, go ahead. Could I? Um, I know we're sort of talking about the details of the sign. There was another comment in staff comments that I want to make sure the board uh, at least is discussing uh, in terms of the details of the car wash, the architectural plans. At the last meeting, we, we talked quite a bit about the car wash, and I think. The yeah, applicant had sort of laid some of the board's concerns, but the plans that were submitted didn't reflect that conversation. The details of the car wash weren't provided. Um, I think there was also discussion about switching floor area of the service bay to have a service door reoriented towards the back of the building, and there wasn't a floor plan that depicted that reorientation. So, um, you know, depending on how the board wants it treat those details. I think it's similar to the conversation with the sign. It's just, you know, does the board like want to... You took away my thunder. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that's that's <laughs> one of my next <laughs> comments. I should have waited. I should have waited. Um, so, the modifications have been made. Um, the, we now have the, all the work for the service day. The service day was addressed from the front side to the back side of the building. I'll show you that on the elevation. In, in a moment, um, these doors are similar to the other doors. They're aluminum doors. They look like storefront you know, windows from a distance. Um, there was concern about the car wash. Uh, unfortunately, I put lines on it that depicted the pieces of it. 
it doesn't look like that. You can't see those lines from the map. <coughs> it's just how the pieces of plastic slide together. Um, that was an error on my part. So it, it will look like a homogeneous, you know, monolithic form. So it's going to be coordinating with the existing structures. Okay. And we're bringing the, the banding around and applying it on the you know, top of it to get that to get it right. And then uh, continuing work on uh, the building treatment file. And in terms of the, uh, I, I, guess I think I'm going to the stone apron around the building and the sort of corner treatment is that also yes. going to be? Yes. It wasn't working. Yes. Um, the corner treatments, as they are now, will come around. <coughs> they, they don't go around all the way around the back. Sure. You can't see them. Mm. Um, the stone base, the split base base, would, would be continuation of what they So that will go on the car wash edition, not just? Not on the car wash edition. It's kind of technically it's a little odd to be, but this, this is a plastic sleeve that goes all the way down into the ground car wash and through the mound for tearing it up the park. It's a proprietary system that has you know, great performance with regards to water and whatnot. So um, we, we chose to have it go down into the ground with it more for a function of treatment. So we brought it around to and pick it up all the way around the back. We just didn't do the car wash. Another one of the comments that staff made was the uh, uh, resubmitting floor plans depicting the internal use of the expansion. I guess that, you know, I've, I've lost most of my hair on my head. Why this wasn't included in, to make it clearer? This drawing was in the package. What was missing from the drawing was the notes, right here, which just indicated the actual Okay, and I I know that uh, you, you you've got uh, permission because it came up at the last meeting too to hold uh, certain events there, but uh, uh, that you're still going to need permits to from the court enforcement office. That's understood, right? Okay. Um, anything else? Okay. Yeah, I think we did. And how's your negotiation going with the DOT? That uh, it's ongoing. It's it's up at DOT. They started with the Scarborough office. Um, basically, they revert back up to the Augusta office. Um, I checked on the status, and it's it's still ongoing. It's been tough to try to get something out of DOT lately. Okay. I, just for the board's uh, understanding, this is just an addition. They already have a contract with with DOT, yeah. so it's not the, any. The, the reason that they a revision is needed is we're we're currently not going to increase any discharge to their system based on what was there back in 2002 before Prime Mercedes was built. The reason for the revision is that the way they define this license agreement and discharge connection was very specific to a dealership site to include only a certain number of parcels and it currently does not indicate the Sunoco parcel because that was not owned by 137 U.S. Realty. Mm. So it's the only revision needed is to include that one parcel into it. Uh, yeah, on a positive note since we've been that way, getting rid of that Sunoco station. 
and getting rid of the <laughs> curb cuts to me is one of the best things that we can possibly do for this town. Um, it never would have passed muster today, I can assure you of that. All right, let's go back to the last point and how we're going to do this. Um, I have a condition in front of me. The only sort of gray area is do we want, as far as the third sign, to go in, in the route of it's got to be submitted to staff, and if staff's happy, uh, then we're happy. Or do we want it that they have to come back and a separate issue for sign approval? What's the consensus of the board? I know your, your point is. Yeah, I would just ask the board that, you know, you know, I, I look at the site plan <laughs> as presented, and I would be in favor of the site plan whether there was a third sign or not. Um, I'm happy approving a third sign and it's design and construction. It'd be a condition that they return and show us what those details are. So we have an opportunity to uh, provide input. That's is what that I would the like. sentiment? Not mine. I, I don't see what, um, what could come back to us a month from now that is going to prevent us from approving this project. No, it, we're saying separate from the, we're leaving yes. the sign out. I know. I, you know, I look at the length of our, our board schedules currently, um, the time of the applicants, the time for staff. I, I just don't see the absolute need. I think we could sit here as a board and set up the parameters and know that, quite frankly, we're dealing with a, a franchise who's not going to um, represent themselves uh, on a physical appearance poorly in the community to begin with. Secondly, if we have a set parameters, I do trust that our staff and our chairperson uh, could adequately make the decision as to whether or not the rendering that we've already seen and all kind of nod our heads at is reflected into what they're proposing to build. I don't think that requires more board time. That's my that's my personal opinion. Thank you. And John? I'm okay with staff. No I am too. Staff. I, am too. I, I am too, so if you put that in there. Go ahead. Just, just to close. The, the reason why I suggested that they come back is because we started talking about widths and heights and colors. And it looked like we were leaning towards, you know, having a large discussion and possibly a page and a half of descriptors to give them some boundaries. And it was a lot easier just to say, why don't you just come back? Okay. Now, um, I if we're not going to get involved in all that, then I would be in favor of staff uh, reviewing it. Well, there's certain parameters they have to go by anyway, uh, the, the design standards for, for the town. <coughs> This is a contract zone, and we have an opportunity to, you know, offer additional input as to what, uh, over and above what our sign ordinance says. <coughs> but again, I'm okay with it. Mr. Okay. Chair, when you get to the third condition, uh, I have drafted some additional language to try to capture some of the discussion you here tonight, so I can, you will I can jump do the in third condition. Yes, if okay. you all right, hearing, hearing that. I move to approve the amended site plan application of 137 U.S. Route 1 Realty, LLC, for the expansion of the parking lot and a building addition as proposed in materials submitted on their behalf by Sebago Technics. Plan dated, set dated 424 15. The proposed expansion has uh, uh, received approval by the Town Council for the necessary contract zone amendments permitting the proposed site modification. And based on the board's review, the applicant has, has met the review criteria of the site plan review ordinance. The plans are hereby approved with the following conditions. One, prior to the start of construction, the applicant shall provide the plan department with a copy of the revised agreement with the OT for stormwater discharge into the Route 1 right, right of way. <coughs> Two, Prior to the issuance of a building permit, the architectural plan set dated 427-15 shall be revised and submitted to the planning department for review and approval of the details of the car wash portion of the building expansion. Materials and architectural features shall coordinate with the existing building materials. Three. Prior to the issuance of a building permit, the applicant shall provide details of the proposed resale freestanding sign package, as well as depicting the exact location of the existing Sunoco sign location to the planning department for review and approval. The third sign location uh, or sign 
or I'm sorry, the proposed third sign shall be consistent with the concept depicted on sheet A-SKR in terms of size and scale. Okay. Four. Prior to utilizing the site for the accessory use functions permitted per the contract zone agreement, the applicant shall secure any necessary permits through all other applicable agencies and departments. And five. There is no five. That was, that was it. Okay. There is no five. Do I hear a second? Second. Any discussion? Yes, sir. I'm just a little, uh, you know. I, I'd be interested to hear from the applicant whether that condition, condition we call number three, of uh, providing details uh, uh, on the third sign, are you able to obtain all that in time uh, to begin the construction of the, uh, of, of the improvement? Is that going to hold you up at all? Because, again, I think, you know, whether, even if, the, if there was no third sign, I'm not hearing that the board would be it, not in favor of this. Uh, of that's this a good question. No, my, that's, a, that's a good question. I, 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 I'd like to hear the answer to that, too. I'll speak with Mercedes Benz this week and, and get determination on the sign, what the parameters are, and we'll get something to you hopefully by the end of the week. Could certainly consider that if the board is concerned, modifying to prior to the issuance of a sign permit um, rather than a building permit. I, I would Frankly, just say staff might offer that that probably does make more sense yeah. since a sign permit is something separate and distinct from a building yeah. permit. So this would permit the rest of the activity to <laughs> move forward and the sign can happen as it happens, but not until they I, get I would be permit. with the board's indulgence, I would prefer that be uh be the condition three. That yes. Sign permit, yeah. Just take out prior to the issuance of the building permit be taken out of them. Replace the word building <coughs> in the front of the issue to the sign permit. Okay. That's good. Okay, down here. Yes. Good point, Mike. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you. Um, do you accept the. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Any other discussion? All in favor? <coughs> uh, Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Absolutely. <laughs> What are you doing there? Are you okay? Yeah, I'll live. You want to leave? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I mean, do you want to take a break? Oh, I'm good. I'm okay. Um, I'm happy. I want to take a break. You want to take a break? I have to take a break. Okay, and I guess, all right, we're, we're going to take no, a... No, he's oh, you've got to take a break. And okay, no, we're, we're not. He's going to recuse himself for, for a minute. Yeah. Okay. I think Roger stepped out. Uh, okay. Yeah, Roger stepped yeah. out. Number 11. Tina and Eric Richardson re request a preliminary subdivision review for a four-lot residential subdivision titled Non-Such non -such Estates. Chase. Sure. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, let's see, this is a application, as you just noted, for a four-lot subdivision in the RF district. Um, it's actually the property has RF zoning, shoreland zoning, and stream protection two district on it. Um, the board saw this as a sketch plan maybe two meetings ago, if I'm not mistaken. Um, actually, when we originally saw this, the applicant was before you, uh, originally thinking of a nine-lot subdivision. I think uh, as they dug into the details and the characteristics of the site, um, they've now modified that to be a four-lot subdivision. Um, as I'm sure staff will note, uh, I'm sorry, as the board will note, staff has a host of comments, um, particularly in light of the public works director's uh, concerns, as well as Woodard and Kern, our peer-reviewed civil engineers. We think there's a number of design elements that require additional uh, work before the board can take any formal action on this. So really, uh, staff's recommendation is that we really see this as a highlighted sketch plan discussion. Continue uh, talking about the merits or the, you know, the basic parameters of development, uh, but certainly there's a lot of level of detail here that, that needs to be uh, uh, 
consider. Um, I will note that the applicant has requested a few waiver items that certainly probably worth at least discussing and giving direction to the board on in terms of <coughs> pardon me, uh, landscape plan, uh, traffic analysis, and any off-site improvements. Um, so uh, certainly I think those are at least worthy of discussion as we go through tonight. But that's um, not going to go all my detailed comments here. Is, uh, certainly those will be addressed as we move along in the process. So for that, Mr. Chair, I'd turn it back to you. Thank you. I'll bring it up. Hello, my name is Jason Vafiatis with Vafiatis Engineering Design. I'm here on behalf of uh, Tina and Eric Richardson. And uh, I do believe we might have uh, public comment here. Did you want to open up for that uh, prior oh, no, to I'd rather hear from you and okay. then we'll open yep. to public okay. comment. Uh, as Jay uh, summarized quite uh, precisely, uh, we have gone out uh, and picked up, as you know, at Sketch Plan, we didn't have uh, boundary survey in yet or uh, finalized wetlands. Uh, we have done that. and. Uh, Thank you. <coughs> now, as noted, this is open for public discussion, so I will now open it to the public. <coughs> yeah. uh, name and address, please. Uh, my name is Herbert Prey, and I'm at uh, 80 Mitchell Hill Road. And I'm his wife, Crane. Thank you. I'd like to thank the board members for giving us an opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, we've presented a letter to Jay that I'm assuming you've received already. Uh, we know our time is limited, so we'll make this as quick and easy as possible. We have a lot of concerns about this project and how it's going to affect our property. Our main concern is the Arbor Lane and how it will affect our property. We're concerned about the blasting to create this road of pr the proposed name being Arbor Lane. Now, mind you, um, that area that my husband was pointing to is a very steep slope. Um, so we're, we're concerned about that area needing to be blasted to create this road. One of the other concerns we have is the runoff from the top of the hill 
coming down to the bottom of the hill where we're located. We're also uh, concerned about if there is blasting in this area. Um, our well is about 100 feet long. And as you all can imagine, a house without water, if this does stir up water, a house without water is, is no house at all. And in, in, in 26 years, we've had a water tested three times, and it's been perfect water. So it, as you can understand, we're very concerned with any blasting going on in that area. Okay. Storm uh, the stormwater. The uh, stormwater. We're concerned about the drainage plan for, and how it affects our property and how it's going to be directed to the Mitchell Hill Road. From my understanding, there's going to be a culvert along the side of the Mitchell Hill Road, which we uh, the, will be directing the water towards the river and our property, being in the middle. Um, it looks like the, the culvert is going to go right here. Now, please, please keep in mind that this is the Stephen River. Most of this runoff comes down through here. Um, the public works can can certainly speak to this section right here. Um, they're struggling to try to keep this from collapsing. Um, in fact, last last fall, this whole section right down to our driveway, just the whole thing just kind of collapsed. Well, 50 feet of it just collapsed. And it sounds like that the drainage is going to come down through here and into a culvert to add to this, uh, this whole front, front area. One of our other main concerns is Lot 1, which is directly behind our property, is at a low point, which will ha already has a standing pond, I guess you could say, that's pretty significant throughout the whole year. Um, we understand that film will be brought in, but that will now make our property, again, at the low, low point. Yeah, this, this whole area right Uh, we were wondering, um, will all the trees be stripped from these four lots? I want to know if there's going to be any kind of a buffer between the lots in our property, more particularly lot one. We'd like to know if there's an association fee. And we're curious as to why this traffic analysis was omitted from the application. We understand it was a waiver, but... We're still curious as to why there was no traffic analysis. I, I think probably all of all of the uh, members here probably know Mitchell Hill. They probably know that Mitchell Hill itself is a treacherous hill. Um, we've had bus drivers refuse to drive down that hill at one time. Every year, I grab my shovel and I look I look outside the the, the window and I can. See someone going off the road. This happens two to three times a year. Uh, 
look to my wife and I'll say, I don't I gotta go out, I'll grab my shovel and I'll go out there and help look this in the ditch. It's a treacherous um, it's a treacherous hill. And I would encourage the board members to crest the top of that hill and just slow down and look in your every mirror. That hill is traveled uh, a lot in the morning and in the afternoon as the commuters are going back and forth to work. And they're going down that hill sometimes 50 miles an hour or more. And, uh, and just bring yourself over that crest and look in your rearview mirror and imagine so you're waiting for someone to come up the hill so you can make a left-hand turn on Arbor Lane. Um, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a weird feeling. Um, <coughs> so that, that's why we brought up why the traffic study wasn't. Was a, was a minute. So that was another concern we had. We'd like to know about the um, screening for the headlights turning onto the mid, um, Arbor Lane and how it would affect our home. Yeah, the people turning in into here. Now that this is the hard, the hard way to look at it because it all looks like it's a flat line. But as you turn into here, the headlights point right to the back of the floor of our house. One of our no another major concern we have is the uh, snow plowing in the winter and how um, they'll plow the Arbor Lane and where that snow would go. Right now, if they were to blast that hill, it appears that there'll be ledge on one side of the road, A which would ledge. which would make the snow plowing. On our property, basically, and we, and or we, heading in our direction. And we have enough issues with water draining into my backyard. We just, that's a, another concern on us. Um, also, a wooden fence is proposed on the le on the ledge side of the road. We would like to know who will maintain that. We have concerns about the foul weather and people turning left onto Arbor Lane. Uh, that is a dangerous road. <coughs> Seen many people go off the road. So I'm wondering, you know, just we're concerned about, it's, we probably shouldn't be concerned, but we're concerned about how people are going to turn, coming down the hill, turning left onto Arbor Lane, trying to slow down on that hill when it's slippery. I've gone down that road many times sideways. Um, so no, I know, I know what it's mention, like. Uh, when, when she comes home from her afternoon commute, slowing down that hill, people have crested that hill so fast that they did not have time enough to slow down, not realize that she's, she has her blinker on to turn left into our driveway. And they actually pass her going down the hill, um, creating a near miss many times. And I've seen, uh -huh. it. I've seen it myself. Oh, you already talked about the swelling ditch. Um, we were wondering why the main DP, DEP was excluded from the application. We'd like to know if the fire department and public works has weighed in on the safety concerns of this road, and as well as maintaining Arbor Lane. <coughs> yeah, that, one of our next items was uh, I'd like to urge all the planning, man, planning board members to read the letter that we sent to Jay, if you haven't already. Um, we have copies of that, by the way. Copies of that, okay. Uh, this will not only affect us, but the it'll have the effect on the town and the future occupants of none such estates. 
if this is not done right, let's put the burn. Let's not put the burn to fix it, but the taxpayers of Scarborough. This also has a large environmental impact, a safety impact, and a stormwater impact, as well as the entire natural landscape of the area will be changed. <coughs> Thank you for allowing us to speak. Thank you for your comments. Anybody else? Okay, I'll close it to the public and open it up to the board and hopefully we'll address some of the concerns and comments from the public. Nick, do you want to start? Um. <laughs> hey, remember, we're only, uh, because of the complexity of this, uh, just to take the pressure off a little bit, uh, uh, starting with you is uh, just discussion. Yeah. This is just discussion, and so. And I'm going to be I'm going to be real honest. My my first impression uh, when I had the packet and I opened this up and I got the staff comments, my first impression was you weren't ready to be here today, and and that's me being bluntly honest with the amount of um, notes that we had of items that you needed to be prepared for. I didn't quite feel like you were um, supposed to be here right now. That said, I do understand that a broader overall sketch review commentary will help you at some point. Um, I personally think that this is one of those projects where, um, I'm not saying officially, I think the board should visit the site, although I think we should consider um, a walkthrough on a site like this. Funny you should have that, uh, say that because I got in big bold letters all the <laughs> Read your <laughs> mind, read your letters. Yeah, I, I, this is one of those properties, um, and, and we get them occasionally, where a uh, site visit would would probably do uh, the board a great deal of uh, help, especially with the education part of what this looks like. I mean, I can, uh, from what I can read here, it looks like you have a, an 18-foot an descent down Arbor Lane over a 300-something foot length. So, you know, it appears to be a slope. It's, the numbers are great, but it's not going to really impact me personally until I get there and see it, and then I can really tell you what 18 feet a foot drop over a 300 foot length really looks like and um, you know and it, so I, I would ask the board to consider that and I'm glad you picked up on that too uh, Ron and as far as uh, I believe it was one of the lots was noted to um, uh, was it lot three that is not in compliance with the frontage is there any reason we can't get that into compliance if you were to present a plan Yes, it, we can work that out. That was uh, that was a miss on on my part, um, missing that the town doesn't recognize frontage on the blunt end of the turnaround. We knew you didn't recognize frontage on the the actual T, the hammerhead turnaround, but it's just an extension of the the road by 25 feet to pick up 50 feet. Right. Outside. And and help me just clarify something real quick. The out <coughs> parcel is. That is this drawn in stone? Has this been signed? This is the piece of property you have, or is this out parcel currently sitting there, waiting to happen if this plan goes through? No, the 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 sellers of this property at large were uh, in a very quick hurry to to make a deal and unload it, and so what we what the lawyers and we had we had to do was create a, a parcel that met current zoning for two acres, not part of a subdivision. And cut that off. So that that is this is in stone. That is in stone. Okay, that's been recorded. That's what I wanted to yep. know. I didn't know if those lines were able to be moved based on the overall uh, outcome of a project like this. So there might be some things we could do with easements. I think going back to them, but as far as land, no. Um, I think uh, just from a design perspective, the um, I don't think I like. I'm not saying it's wrong. I don't think I personally like seeing the hammerheads cut into properties like that, but that's probably just a personal preference thing more than anything. Um, I see I see your driveways. How? What's the distance? I don't know if you have that. What's the distance on? I believe it's lot three. On this, the page I'm not looking on does not have the lot number. The distance from uh, lot. Yeah, it's lot three's driveway. What's the difference from the back of the hammerhead to his driveway? Uh, that's probably about uh, 18 feet. And just out of, do 
do we know if that's sufficient to the fire department and how no, that how that works? What, and, and this is a schematic that we do have drawn up, and I, I, I don't think I actually did email that out, so my comment said they will. Um, we we um, <coughs> limit driveway locations 25 feet from the beginning of the hammerhead, and then you can't have a driveway. Then there's a window where you can have a, a driveway, and then the last 25 feet of the hammerhead you can't have. And that's for winter operations primarily, a right. place to push snow. So, so currently um, that, that will be something we do. Driveway is <coughs> not. And with problem. the extension of that hammerhead, actually, you know, we create a little more space in there. That problem probably goes away. Um, I think there's a lot to take into consideration. And again, I, I'm going to pass off to the next board member. But for, for my mind, I think a, a site visit would be helpful here. And then um, additionally, I, you know, I look forward to seeing a, a more cleaned up version um, for us to review. There's, I think there's still a lot of question marks here. So. Yeah, and we, we, we've got, uh, as I'll know, that this topography <laughs> is, uh, is aerial, and we've actually, the, the reason the stakes are out there is we've gone out and picked up all the topography through here, and we'll be able to, to fine tune a much better design for the next point, and as well as incorporate and meet with town staff on um, what they'd like to see happen here, and maybe it's an opportunity to work with the town and maybe try to clean up a little bit right. down through here. And, and, and I think um, the next time uh, you come here, I think it would behoove you to try to help alleviate maybe some of the abutters' concerns. Oh, oh definitely. Um, and address them at and some, I plan on some point. point. Yeah. Mr. Mrs. Price, it would be, try be good for them. Thank yep. you. Yep, absolutely. Also, Roger. Um, thank you. Uh, I agree with Nick. Uh, I think it's important we have a sidewalk on this, um, especially to get a, a feel for what the praise are talking about. Yes, and, and, and they're probably not exaggerated. I mean, this road is, unfortunately, the the site distance as defined by the MDOT doesn't usually take into account vertical change. You know, usually it's based on speed limit and, and site distance. Um, and I've actually got some ideas on maybe how we can maybe create a little more awareness of, of that. You know, not only this proposed road, but there are driveways down here, and as the, the praise we're talking about, that um, I've been on this I've been out to this parcel quite a bit, and I understand that, and I'm very sensitive to those those concerns. And I have a few ideas I'd like to run by Public Works about what we can do, maybe with signage or uh, even like one of those blinking uh, solar panel signs that on the top of this hill that promotes like you know new traffic patterns or left-handed turn coming up that raises some awareness to the the travelers on this road that there's something going on you know past the crest of this hill, and I, I think that be a good conversation to have with uh, Public Works. Um, I've lived in town for 35 years, and I, I, I don't recall ever being on this road before, but I went there to visit the site today. And, um, uh, but first I read the, uh, the public works director's comments about going backwards so he has sand on the road. So he <laughs> and I couldn't believe that that is really some road. Yeah. Um, it is. So I think, uh, I think it would benefit us greatly to go out there and take a look at it and, and and see what these folks are talking about, and and um, and then go from there. Susan, um, I agree. This is very much a beginning. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very yeah. much a beginning, and I'm not even going to touch all of the public works <coughs> concerns because I'm sure that you and public works will become very good friends in the <laughs> next few weeks. <coughs> um, I'm a great lover and believer in. Um, walks and sometimes I've taken them and nobody else cares and people come up to me and want to know who I am and what I'm doing and you know but it's always worthwhile until you get your feet on the soil you have really no clue as to what, what's going to what, what's going to be happening so I would like to have staff with um, the applicant try to schedule that as soon as possible uh, well I don't mean that before they come back <laughs> sometime in the process before they return um, I appreciate the um, comments. Um, I think that it always helps to know these things up front. I encourage applicants to go out and knock on doors if necessary. If people don't come to you, you need to go to them because that's where the rubber hits the road in terms of what we believe and whether or not it's going to be successful. Um, I'll wait until I hit the site block until I have anything else to say. Thank you. Uh, I don't have much to add uh, that my colleagues have already <coughs> mentioned. Uh, I think it's also important that might, might provide us with some narrative that 
allows us to understand better what the possible effects of blasting, what kind of blasting will be done, and what kind of um, guarantees might be put forth should uh, should uh, post blast the experiences are a little bit different for the neighbors. Um, I, I'm in favor of sidewalks, but I but um, I think we we may be premature in going out and seeing this site before we get a little bit more feedback from uh, some of the ideas you have uh, and some of the discussions you will have already had with Public Works, et cetera. So um, it would be, um, to my benefit anyway, if I was to walk this site with you, you would be explaining to me those kinds of discussions that have been taking place and what kind of improvements or uh, mitigating efforts uh, you would have already considered. And I think the importance of the site walk, I think a primary sort of, the, Sort of the first issue here is is the, is the existing conditions of Mitchell Hill Road and and that sort of and and maybe that you know a, a few of you have gone out and driven it because you haven't you didn't really know the road and you really get a sense of it and then secondary but not really less important is the con you know what can we do to uh, alleviate any sort of impacts that happen to uh, 80 Mitchell Hill Road uh, down here and um, and certainly very open to you know. I, very sympathetic to their position and um, what we can do within, you know, some screening, our revides, um, you know, if I believe the applicant would like to do something sort of nice at the entrance as much as we can and, and if we can sort of incorporate that with, with providing them with some, a little more privacy, uh, that's definitely something we, we'd explore. Um, I think that's it for now, but good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I've got some comments. Um, I'm certainly, as I said, I had in capital letters here, uh, site walk, and I'm sort of torn between <coughs> doing it before the fact or, uh, as, as Mike just said, you know, there were so many problems associated with this project. I mean, when, when I read through it, to me it sounded like you were trying to put a round peg through a square hole in, in, in the location, and uh, I'm sort of wishy-washy as to which comes first, the cart or the horse, but I'll go along with the sentiment of the board in, in that direction. Uh, but in addition, and I appreciate the comments uh, from, from the, the abutter, um, you know, I don't know if we go out there and we take a look at it and say there's no sense in going any further, in our opinion, or have some of these issues answered and then go out there. Um, again, I'll go with the sentiment. But DEP, I think, needs to be brought into this thing. And I, I certainly would not have been in favor of wavering the traffic thing because, uh, you know, I, I when Mike Shaw throws up, some roadblocks that really catches my attention because uh, he usually doesn't. I mean, he may not like everything we approve, but he isn't as adamant in his stand as he seems to be with this particular project. Uh, and I also uh, would have been current, uh, uh, very skeptical uh, about stormwater. And so, you know, those are two big factors. Uh, right at the outset, in addition to all the other issues that go along with this particular project. Um, so, you know, right now, I, I, I'm, I'm with my other board members. I mean, this is in its infancy stages, to say the least. But what is the consensus of the board? Should we... Uh, but I think Mike makes a lot of sense because we could go out there. I mean, I'm, I'm eager to go out there and see the site and everything. But it would make more sense to go out there after you've had a chance to talk to Mike Shaw and, and remedy or at least come up with some of the, um, you know, concerns that these folks have. Sure. And, and I think you have as well. You know. Yeah. And, and Wait a minute. Go ahead, Sue. I don't think we need to be doing this seriously. We want a site walk. It's their responsibility to give us all the information they think we need on a site walk. But my question to you, and I for my I'd education. I'd like to go first. I'd like to see what's there, and if, if they care about us coming, they will have ready for us anything that we might ask questions about. That's, I, I don't think we have to tell them what it is we need. We just make an appointment, we go out, and they're qualified to answer the questions. And if they don't, 
Well, then it just slows up their process. Uh, you're much more experienced at this than I am. Cause you, no offense. You've no. been around longer than I have. Well, <laughs> look at me, of course. <laughs> but uh, do you think that going out in this particular instance, before we have some of these facts, yeah. will give us I enough we, insight? I think we need to I go respect and see that. the roads. Oh, I, I think respect we need to that. see the wetlands. I think we need to understand where the, where the residents that live there now are. And if the applicant has got the time to go out with all that we've done tonight and get some kind of idea, you know what we're going to be looking for. Maybe they will have some answers, and if not, we're not going to do anything until we do get the answers, so it'll just slow them up. Nick, you what, do you, what, what do you think? Yeah, I'm on the fence. I think I'm with you. I mean, some of these things I think should have probably been addressed before we got yeah. too deep into this. Um, but I do think a, a site walk is, I mean, if this is going to come back to us, I mean, I, I guess my hesitation would be if they're going to go back and they can't get us everything we need and all the comments and they're not going to be satisfied, then don't waste more time going out for a walk. But if you're confident enough that this is going to get remedied one way or another, and what it is is for us to go out and see it, then I'm okay with doing the walk. I mean, I, I think I defer to Susan and her experience and say, if, it, if it's still worthwhile to go for the walk uh, at this point in time, then I, we go for the walk. I yeah. think we should go for the walk. I agree with you, Susan. Thank you for your comment, too. Um. <coughs> yeah, I bring some experience, too. <laughs> I forgot you had been on I know. And you, not much. No. Um, what, what is your experience? I'm sorry, Mike. What, no, no, no. I don't mind going out for a walk. Also, you know, I, I, I would not be opposed to that. I'll, I, I just think I personally would benefit more that if, um, I'm sorry, I forgot your first name. If Jason was able to um, orate for us some of the discussions he's had with the um, uh, different parties, as we, walk, as we walk and look and ask questions, he'd be in a better position to make, have those answers. <clears throat> so I, I think it's just better that he says, yeah, I'm, I'm prepared for that sidewalk as opposed to us setting a date and him trying to meet that deadline to have those answers, that's all. Whatever. Well, I would think maybe your Whatever. individual maybe super – I mean, these certainly – these aren't things that can't be held happening simultaneously. I can be getting answers in between time, I mean, unless you schedule a sidewalk for tomorrow. Can we have two sidewalks? Hey, you don't need everybody to go on the sidewalk, so, you know. What do you think, Jay? Um, I think it would just, I think it's going to take us a couple of weeks to find a suitable date that we can get plan board members. In that amount of time, I'm confident that I can get the public works director and Winter and Kern planning staff together with, with Jason to have a pre-discussion. That way we can know when we're out at the site visit, yes, I can address this design flaw, or nope, this is a design flaw I'm going to ask for a waiver for, and here it is. So I think that's really, um, so yes, yeah, we can be pushing. Okay. The and the only other thing so. I want to add to that, and thank you, the only other thing is some of the answers to the concerns I, I would like to have while we're doing that site wide because there are certain things you can have answers to at that time. I, I don't think those any less importantly than, than your comments, really. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, we want to, when something's done, it, you know, it should stand up on its own. Um, and certainly the waivers, there's no reason why those waivers need to stand. You know, I, I think as far as that, uh, Ronald, just to share, I think that you mentioned the MDP. That <laughs> I sort of misspoke. Typically we engineers think of MDP permitting as stormwater site location. There is a, a main general permit, which is a permit by rule, which uh, this would trigger, and that's typically a form you fill in and you send in before you construct, and, and you know, that's typically a... And it's what they call an administrative uh, permit. So uh, that was on me to sort of sort of <coughs> gloss over that. Uh, because these lots are going to be marketed um, and sold as, you know, vacant lots that the applicant is not creating more than an acre of impervious area by himself as an entity, and therefore there's no requirement for a stormwater. <coughs> However, your ordinance may require, you know, the DEP standards anyway. So, and that's certainly, all those things are, you know, the, the stormwater issues respected to here are, are, are easily remedied. Um, and working with Public Works and the abutter here, you know, we'll look at this and try to bring up, you know, a much better plan of attack. Okay, so we'll set up a, a site walk and Jay, Jay will be in touch with you and he will do a survey of the board to see what would be convenient for the board. Cool. And we'll go from there. Thank you very much.
the last agenda item, which is actually agenda item number eight. Dunstan Properties LLC requests sketch plan review for mixed use development at the intersection of Route 1 and Stewart Drive. Yes, of course. By way of overview, um, this application is before you for a sketch plan discussion uh, for two properties that are in the TBC district, the Town <coughs> Village uh, Center district, uh, one of the communities' uh, mixed use, <coughs> higher density, uh, uh, commercial, and residential zones. Um, between the two properties exists the existing right of way that provides a secondary means of access to the Dunstan Crossing subdivision which folks are probably aware of the current access off of uh, Broad Turn Road. Um, as I stated, this is a sketch plan review. Given the scope of the development, this application will ultimately come before the board through a plan development review process, which is sort of a measured, deliberate review process of a site, site inventory analysis, which then, presuming the board comes to you know agreement around the Basically, the site inventory takes a look at the natural uh, characteristics, the cultural char characteristics of the site, the layout, the ostensibly the buildable areas or those areas that might be uh, considered more sensitive. Once that's determined, the applicant comes before you with a master plan similar to what we're sort of looking at here that lays out the general uh, development patterns. Um, um, and then once that's approved, it uh, matriculates into a full site plan review, full engineering analysis, traffic analysis, everything we were sort of just talking about. Um, so uh, that's just a uh, brief uh, introduction of the zoning context that we're in. And uh, with that, Mr. Chair, I'll turn it back to you. Yeah, just want, again, stress to the board that uh, we're just looking for what they want to do and get a general flavor of the, of the situation. Uh, it, I think it's very premature to give you know, concrete guidance at this stage. So with that, uh, we'll it'll open it up to the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Elliot Chamberlain, owner of Dunstan Property. As most of you are probably aware, this is the what the vision was part of Dunstan Crossing, which was going to be the non-residential section, the commercial section. Um, if we go back a very long time ago when we first started Dunstan Crossing, this used to be a B2 zone. Uh, after we got approved and some of the zoning was changed, this became what is called a TVC zone, and it's a mixed-use zone. And we've been a while uh, thinking about what we wanted to do with it, how we wanted it to look. And uh, I joined forces with Foresight Architects, who's uh, with me tonight. And we've put together a vision of uh, what is truly a mixed-use plan. I think follows uh, the context of the zone very well. Uh, it's got residential in it, uh, three different types. It's got retail, uh, hopefully a restaurant site. Uh, it's got a drive-through building. Um, some of these are still visionary. A couple of these buildings uh, we are actually talking to tenants currently. Um, so we, we understand after talking uh, with Jay and with Dan quite a bit about the whole plan development process. And instead of skipping tonight, we thought it was still uh, worthwhile to come in and at least have a sketch plan to, um, to get some ideas, get some feedback. Um, so I, I know Ron just said this is, this is just a sketch plan, but we are looking for, um, you know, does the board think we're on the right track? Do they think we're following the vision of the TVC zone? Um, are there things they like about it or don't like about it? So with that, I'll open it back to the board. And, and uh, actually, I'd like to bring Tom Emery up from Foresight Architects to kind of give you a better feel for uh, what we did, what the buildings represent, uh, kind of a general overview of the site, and uh, then we can go from there. Thank you. Uh, good evening, uh, Mr. Chair, Planning Board members. My name is Tom Emery. I'm a landscape architect with Foresight Architects in Falmouth. And with me is Mark Burns, uh, president and owner of Foresight Architects. Uh, Elliot came to us uh, a number of months ago and uh, described what his vision was. And on a piece of sketch paper and so forth, we came up with uh, what we thought was some uh, good options and have developed this into now it's, it's a, uh, a highly developed illustrative plan. But if you've had a chance to 
review the narrative that was submitted with the application. Uh, we tried to describe the key components of this plan that we think makes it special, and essentially what we're trying to do is to create a brand. So when somebody comes to Dunstan Village, they're not going to rely on a pylon sign to know that they're there. They're going to understand that this is a village and that the businesses and, and the residents of the village will have that entire village as a brand, uh, you know, almost like another section of, of uh, town might be. But uh, just as a quick overview, the main components of this plan uh, are the uh, main street spine. When you come in from Route 1, there's a, there's a uh, east-west spine, so to speak, and in the middle of that spine is what we call the town square. There'll be some sort of a, a, a monument, a sculpture with a fountain, and some landscaping to really mark the crossroads of, of, the, of that spine. And that spine is framed on both sides, the main street in a traditional New England main street fashion with angled on-street parking for traffic calming, wide sidewalks with street trees, mixed use. Uh, we'll have uh, residential on the second floor with commercial on the ground floor on one side, and on the other side we may have a restaurant and other uh, office uh, buildings. Uh, and then uh, we have a public square and the adjacent public garden that, that creates the north-south spine in the development. And that's flanked on the south side by uh, commercial buildings and then on the, on the north by residential uh, buildings. And we have a res residential core. And Elliot talked to the, uh, the idea of the mixed uh, residential types. We have uh, courtyards uh, for townhouses. And then we also have the uh, building that I think Jay talked to earlier, which right now has 36 apartment units in it. And uh, that will be part of the ongoing discussion uh, with the master plan. Uh, and then uh, jumping back to Route 1, we have the Route 1 buffer, uh, understanding the importance of the image from Route 1. We don't want to put a uh, junkyard screen along Route 1. We want something that has a mix uh, of types of plants as well as screening certain areas using landform to help screen areas and also to open up views because we're going to have some attractive, many attractive views, I think, of interest uh, to uh, visitors and residents. And then to have two, two open spaces, one at the north end of the development and one at the south end. So if someone's walking along Route 1 or looking along Route 1, there'll be pull-in areas where you can walk and, and rest and, and relax. And um, that really is, is an overview uh, of the entire development. And this is integral to all of the other development that uh, Elliot uh, has uh, completed in the past and looking to in the future. There is one other item. Uh, I think Jay or you might have brought it up uh, about the, the number of units in a building. Um, as Tom just mentioned, one of our buildings has 36 units in, in it. And as per the town ordinance right now, the most we can do is 12 units per building unless it's age restricted. At this point, we don't want to make it age restricted. We were at the Long Range <coughs> Planning Committee on Friday morning. Uh, this subject got brought up, and they're thinking, talking, uh, conversing about whether to change that uh, and, and what type of parameters if they were to change that to use as a guideline. Uh, the building we're talking about is a 36 uh, units of one-bedroom apartments. Um, we'd like to keep it non-age restricted, but obviously with, with the current rule, we'll have to uh, take that into consideration as we move forward and how quickly uh, they might move forward. So with that, if there's any questions or... Well, let's find out. <laughs> John? <coughs> Uh, at first glance, this is a great idea, great project. Uh, obviously, there'll be a lot of details to work through later on, but conceptually, I'm all over this thing. Good luck. Mike? Thank you. Hi, Elliot. <coughs> well, um, certainly, if this is uh, going to follow suit, as I imagine uh, it will from your effort so far <coughs> at Dunstan Crossing, then there's uh, nothing to not like about it. Um, have you uh, thought through um, uh, concepts or ideas as it relates to how you, uh, the ingress and egress of the site from Route 1? Are there going to be any kind of issues coming uh, certainly out of the site and heading north? 
or uh, you know, at crossing? The time, at the time we got <coughs> Dunson Crossing approved, um, I don't think there was any traffic counts from the commercial area uh, used to determine that a, a light was not needed. So I would imagine we would have to relook at new traffic counts with what we have on the plan and determine whether a light, light was allowed, needed, wanted. Um, so that would be part of uh, the process. My guess is that we would probably hit the right numbers for a light at, at full build out. The question is, you know, could we, uh, in the past, what we've done is uh, been allowed to do a certain amount of build out, and then when we hit that certain trip generation, then a light needs to be installed before any other development could occur on site. Right. And uh, I, I think I would benefit by, uh, by seeing this <coughs> in the context of the, 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 the larger project also, because uh, I would imagine you're going to have connectivity to what you've already started there. From the other phases, as yeah, far this, as walking. this road actually is the phase four connection, Dunston Crossing connection to Route One. So it's being used. So when you, uh, when we make the connection from Route One over to the existing phase one, two, and three on the Broad Turn Road mm -hmm. side, uh, this will pass right through. So our main street here is the is the Dunston Crossing entrance. Um, I know you have calculations on the left here, but uh, any any uh, challenges as far as uh, um, having enough parking? Have you? Are you? Um, no, we actually could have gone uh, even heavier on the square footage of both residential and commercial. Um, I allowed at the time. I kind of took the philosophy: less is more. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't want a really heavily intense site. Um, n not that there's nothing on this site, but um, but yeah, under the current conditions, we have uh, plenty of parking uh, under the town's current standards. And we haven't even taken into consideration uh, reducing those by the use of shared parking between daytime and nighttime uses. So we've taken the worst case scenario outlook and, and we've met the parking requirements as per uh, the ordinances today. Um, well, well, I love it. I can't wait to this. Uh, do you have a time frame in mind? I know that. Uh, uh, we actually, we have somebody with currently working with on uh, for a restaurant on this site. One of the buildings is, is specifically designed uh, for this person, and if, if that works out, they would like to be open next spring, so it would <coughs> be, uh, we'd have to fast track it. Are you prepared tonight to like, uh, for instance, um, building D, looks like the drive through uh, is that is that like could that be a drive-through restaurant, a drive-through bank, or that kind of idea? Uh, it could be restaurant, bank, coffee shop. The, we have nobody specific for that particular building, but it under the plan development in this zone, it does allow for a drive-through. Mm -hmm. So we wanted to show the capability uh, of where it could go, and taking into account um, somebody who would want to drive through, where might they want it be on site, and <coughs> our thought was it would be uh, much more preferential to be up near the front. Yeah. And not bring all that traffic that was strictly going in to use the drive-through to have to travel through the entire site. Right, right. That was my comment. That and, uh, that building roughly represents what a small bank branch, uh, a typical bank branch would be. That would be a large, say, Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, but it would be a typical bank branch. Okay. All right. Well, I can go on and on, but I don't want to steal uh, time from my fellow colleagues. But thank you, thank you, Ellie. <coughs> Susan. I'm impressed. <laughs> I'm always impressed. I remember back when we didn't have anything like this in Scarborough. Mm. Well, I was remembering it. I don't remember what it's like to be the easiest project on the agenda. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what it is? It's, it's, a com it's a comment on how how well we've gotten, how, how much we've improved, and what it is we ask for, and how much you've, not you personally, but, yeah, you personally, everybody has improved in terms of actually taking them on. And then coming in here <coughs> and saying, okay, we're going to work with this and do the best we can with this. And this is a perfect example. You know, I mean, we really worked hard at this zoning. We knew what we wanted, and there it is. It's all very exciting, and I have nothing negative to say, nothing positive to say, except I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you much. Um, just a couple of questions. I think it looks terrific as well. And uh, I'm just kind of curious. Um, do you have? Do you own the property on either side, or of this? 
No, I would assume you're talking here? Yes. Uh, no, that is the furniture company. Uh, okay. That building right there. Okay. And then you have just to the north of this property is uh, that seafood, walk-in seafood um, takeout place. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. Right across from the Thai restaurant. And the but no, we don't own either one to answer your question. Okay. Uh, the only other question I have is on the uh, on H5. You know, the apartments? Yep. Um, do you have any idea what you're what you going to market those at in terms of um, rent? Uh, we don't right now. Um, we know they're going to be one-bedroom apartments. I yeah. don't know whether they're going to be 400 Wait, square feet or 800 square feet. Upscale, though, I would assume. Um, I'm, I'm not even prepared to say that. Okay. But they will be market rate. They won't be subsidized. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, that's, that's all I have. My, uh, I, I'm excited one. This is a nice plan. Um, I think my only concern, the only thing that jumped out at me was uh, your entrance from Route 1 coming in, and then you have that you know, slanted parking going in. And what I've seen a lot, my, my wife is from New York, so I've gotten to spend some time in these very narrow streets with slanted parking. And as people back right out, it causes extensive stacking. And I'm worried on Route 1 coming this way, people trying to turn into the development, one or two people trying to back out of those parking spaces could, could cause, in theory, some delays <coughs> down Route 1. And so I would just ask you to look at that area. And, you know, by using my very scientific pen, it looked like it was maybe 180 feet from the entrance when you get to the, you know, maybe 120, yep. you get, which, you know, what, 10 cars? That's a lot of cars, I understand. But let's think, you know, Christmas time and people are looking, you know, if you've got shops in there and it's a beautiful place to walk around, I think you need to be prepared for um, some traffic turning in there. So that would be my one comment is uh, that's on building E. So you're mainly looking at the first building on the right as you pull in would really be the biggest concern. That, that. is the bigger concern. Yeah. And that's just because of traffic flow coming from Route 1. I think, you know, while it's nice that you're going to have residents all around there utilizing <coughs> it, I think with, you know, the addition of restaurants and possibly drive throughs you're going to see more than just your, your localized residents utilizing this area, especially if it turns out as nice as your plan indicates. Yep. So. Um, that would be the one area I was I was having any concerns with at this time, but good luck to you guys. Thank you. I just got a couple of comments. Um, I, my ears went up when you talked about uh, uh, what Roger was asking about the uh, what the price is going to be for those units, and I like the idea. And the reason why I like that it's not going to be subsidized is because there are three or four projects on the board right now that will be subsidized in that same general area. So I think this would be a good mixture of diversification of types of people coming into Scarborough, and I think that's that's a positive. Um, I, too, am pretty excited about uh, uh, the overall general plan uh, for, the, uh, for the structure, and uh, um, I look forward to uh, Oh, I do have one other question, and maybe I misunderstood. Is there going to be some commercial with residential above commercial? Yes. Uh, if you look at the two, what is building E and building G, the, the possibility of, one, you may have <coughs> studio apartments that are separate from anything downstairs, but living space above the first floor. Okay, so they would be studio apartments. Yes, okay. or... Uh, Possibly an opportunity to have three or four uh, live-work environments. We've actually talked to one person uh, that may be interested in having a shop on the first floor in a condo-type apartment on the second floor that they could travel, you know, up and down in the same unit. Okay. That's just something that caught my uh, my ear when it, when it was being expressed. Well, like the rest of my board members, I, I look forward to. Uh, uh, as we go forward, and I'll be curious to hear how you make out with the long-range planning committee as far as uh, uh, the exception is concerned, uh, as far as the units approved. And uh, do you know when you expect to get an answer on that? Uh, I don't, and I was not the only one. There was actually two other people that were looking for that uh, uh, one of them was actually headed towards the root of the contract zone to try to make their issue work. Another one 
just like you said, it, um, in the Dunstan area that had the same situation. Um, we're hoping to put more units in one building. Um, I, I would assume that even if it didn't come in time, that it might not be an issue until we actually move forward with the building permit of that building. Is that mm. correct, Jay? Or it would need to. The zoning would need to be in place before the board could do any approval for a building like that. So, I mean, you could show a building, say you're going to put 12 units in there, and then yeah. once that changes, you have to come back. Or it could get approved with the idea that it is age restricted, <coughs> and then take the age restriction off if that was to be lifted. You could do that as well, and you know that would then, as you sort of talked about before, age restriction usually changes a traffic analysis, so that may need to be sort of revisited. Yep. So. Um, but certainly, I think, you know, and depending on what your time frame is for the overall project, I think the board could also look at a phase, to, you know, we could look at sort of getting through the plan development first two phases, uh, <coughs> excuse me, first two phases of the master plan process, the site inventory master plan, have the general layout, yep. you know, maybe it's, maybe it's this, maybe it's something else, and then coming in with site plan in a, in a phased environment, so where you know you want to do building, you know, E, G, and B, say, you know, in the next year, all right, you start there, and then you, you work, out build, there. work out from there. So that's another approach you could take if H, you know, that zoning question on H is still out there, that could be a placeholder on the master plan, you know, call it age restricted, and then if, if when that's changed, then that's yep. easy enough. So okay. I think that's easier to work our way around. Do you need anything else from us? Thank you. Thank you. Be on time next time. Guys <laughs> <laughs> went too quick on the last You can't be set on the agenda. See, but I'm only acting chair tonight, too, and I like to push things. <laughs> um, okay. Next on the agenda, Tom Planner's report. Uh, yeah, I have two items I'd like to report. Uh, one, uh, I think an email plan board members have seen, but uh, also for members of the general public who may be watching, the Long Range Planning Committee Planning Department is uh, going to be conducting a Higgins Beach uh, code repair workshop. It's being framed as really looking at the zoning in the Higgins Beach area through the discussion we're having early on a couple of our earlier applications. There's a number of in, in our beach community, house lots that are non-conforming, and um, it's really taking a look at you know, sort of the history of redevelopment in those areas, and is the zoning, current zoning context the right one, or maybe there's other alternatives. It's a three-day uh, event. It's really sort of considered, you know, the, the planning workshop through the weekend of June 5th, 6th, and 7th. There are activities throughout the day, so we will be having a, uh, a presence on the web so people can sort of see when those events are, people are encouraged to drop in any time that they're available. If you see an event that works for you, but maybe you know the the uh, the the, uh, the agenda for that event doesn't fit exactly what we want to talk about, that's okay. <laughs> people are encouraged to drop in whenever they can and are available throughout that weekend. Um, so I just want to make note of that, and I'll probably bring that to your attention at your next meeting, which is right before that. The other item I want to touch on is. Board members may recall a few meetings ago, probably up to three or four meetings ago, uh, the Rosberry Construction Company was before you with consideration for a sketch plan, a subdivision sketch plan off of Memory Lane. It was called the Thaburge Subdivision. Board members expressed an interest in conducting a site walk out there. I received an email today asking uh, to poll the board uh, as to when you'd be uh, able to do that. Um, so I think as part of the survey I'll be sending around, I think what I'll do is I'll set up a type of a web poll uh, that I'll send around to you. I'll add that <coughs> one to the time of the day. So, you know, I would anticipate we'll probably be out in the woods for an hour, probably two, uh, when we do that walk. So just keep that in mind. Mm -hmm. um, so those are the two items that I had in my report. Any administrative amendment report? Uh, yep, have one item to report at 152 U.S. Route 1. This is the site uh, right at the intersection of Route 1 and Portland Farms Road, where Lois is marketed as the front building, and there's a, uh, a multi-tenant building sort of out back. Uh, 
uh, the multi-tenant building on the Portland Farm side. Uh, the planning board back in the day approved a drive-through uh, location there. Uh, it was for a dry cleaner. Um, Andrew Scoggin Bank has doing some commercial lending out there. They made some slight modifications to that drive-through. Uh, basically what they did is they pulled it back on the building to create a little more queue length uh, in there. Um, and so uh, the board chairman uh, provided a administrative amendment on that. Um, and that is all I have on that item. Correspondence. We received all the items for the items, uh, you know, the agenda items that don't know that the <coughs> board members received anything additional for that. Planning board comments. Request? Comments. Comments. Request? Comments. Request? Um, I would like us to ask applicants when they provide stuff for packets that they print on both sides of the paper. I'm sorry, but that's my thing. Save a tree. And then plant it near the machine's dealership. Yeah. <laughs> I have uh, a couple. I have a couple of things. One, on uh, uh, Tuesday the 28th, uh, there was a joint meeting of the Transportation Committee and Scobble ACE team uh, dealing with crosswalk policy and complete streets policy. And we were also joined by Stephanie Carver and Rick Harbison of uh, General uh, Portland, uh, Greater Portland Clark. Uh, Mike Shaw was there as the Public Works Director, uh, and Paul uh, Niehoff of PAX, and we came up with a tentative, uh, because there was no crosswalk policy, uh, what somebody might have to do, with, and this is just a draft uh, application for pedestrian crosswalk, <coughs> if you want one in your neighborhood or business and so forth. And the other issue is, uh, that we dealt with is a uh, complete streets policy, which is very complicated and, and very much in its preliminary uh, phases. So that was then. And then this past week, there was, it was supposedly a joint meeting of the board members and the council uh, on a contract zone application. Uh, Avesta Housing is uh, looking uh, uh, to build uh, <laughs> some um, subsidized housing uh, at the Southgate House on 577 U.S. Route 1. Unfortunately, um, we were way down on the list, and some of us had other obligations, so we couldn't stay. I know Mike stayed, and Roger stayed, mm -hmm. and uh, um, let's see, Corey was also there. Um, I caught a, a tail end of it on, on TV, but um, my request is that when we have these joint meetings that uh, we're told ahead of time where we're going to be on the list, because that's asking a lot of all of us uh, to to give up more time than we already do. You know, that's just my, my opinion um, about uh, future meetings of the council and, and the board. You may, others of you may think differently, but that's that's my opinion. Um, any other comments? <clears throat> do I hear an? Oh, I do. Thank you all for indulging me in sitting in this chair tonight. I I, I appreciate that very much. Uh, do I hear a motion to adjourn? Well done, Mr. Chairman. Yeah. So moved. Second. All in favor? We we are adjourned. Everyone.